Come on, Annie. Let's go to the movies. This is the Cine Realist, episode 520. My name is Kyle. My name is James. And my name is Zach. And we're here to talk about movies, movie lists, and movie obsession for the next hour or so. Normally, this would be the part where I do the awkward introduction. We all say <laughs> hi to everyone, and then there's a pregnant pause, and then Zach gets mad about it. But we're not going to do that today, because we have someone special joining us today. I think we just got to bring him right into it. See, that's what's called planning ahead. Very nice, Kyle. <laughs> <laughs> You had to bring a guest on the show just to think it through, and I love it. I did have something prepared for last week, and then James has bursted in with the, hey, Kyle, and just put it all to a wash. So, What an odd week to introduce Mo. He wasn't even on the podcast. Was <laughs> last week? Yeah, why were you going to introduce him last week? <laughs> I'm just going to introduce <laughs> Mo every single podcast from now on, whether right. he's here or not. In case he shows up. In case, Perfect. yeah. Maybe he just calls in. I'm not sure. Well, so, lucky for us, he's our Batman expert. And he couldn't not show up on an episode where we're talking about a Batman movie. For sure. I, I have been looking forward to this for about two and a half years. So welcome, guys. <laughs> How you guys doing? Nice. He wasn't here for our, our Justice League uh, remix. With Justice League remix? <laughs> the Snyder Cut? <laughs> yeah, the Snyder Cut. The one I haven't even finished. We, ne- we didn't talk about that movie at length ever. <laughs> uh, we discussed good. it. We never did an official Cinerealist review of it. Mo, do you know I gave that five stars? You gave that five stars. I did. Out of ten? A star for every hour. (laughs) (laughs) Fair enough. That's how Zach judges his movies. I did like it better than the theatrical release, for sure. I thought it was better. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, what is that saying, though, really? (laughs) Well, I mean, that's as far as I can go. It's better than Batman and Robin, for sure. Spoiler. Um, Yeah. (laughs) I'll, 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 yeah, I'll agree with that. Oh, Let's keep the it. Batman and Robin spoilers to a minimum. Please. Okay, sorry in case you haven't okay. seen that one. I don't, I don't want people to know that they have ice skates in their in their yeah. boots. And yeah, spoiler, don't tell them a, about the credit card. That's right, the Bat American Express. Don't leave home exactly. without it. How much did American Express pay for that? I hope nothing. I hope that was too just much. A is the answer. <laughs> I hope they had to pay American Express. Um, Motion, if there was a Batman-themed American, American Express card, would you get it? Uh, the answer is yes. Okay. <laughs> Immediately. Such, a, such I, an easy one. Even if it's like 100% interest rate, I'll still get it. It's fine. <laughs> yeah. You, you might not use it, but you'll get well, it. You're no, I'll it. use it because I want to pull it out and give it to someone. <laughs> Related question. Did you order a pizza from Little Caesars in the last month? I did. I okay. ordered actually last Sunday before the Batman week. Um, sure. I ordered a little piece, a uh, little Caesar's pizza, cheese, please, no pepperoni, mm-hmm. and it was phenomenal. Thank you. Was there much. like a code word to make it a Batman pizza, or a code word to make it? A Batman yeah, pizza? or were well, like all I ordered it Batman shaped. I ordered it so they knew. <laughs> I mean, that's the only way I get my pizza. Yeah, no, it was but really you, cool. It you was, had to uh, request it, though, right? They don't just shoot yeah, out all pizzas no, for a month. No, they Batman don't. shaped, right? They don't. You have to request that special one. It's got it's each end has a calzone kind of component okay. to it, and that's how it makes the bat signal. It's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. There's a picture. I'm of a little lost here. Is, is there a Batman shaped pizza from Little oh, Caesars? Oh, Kyle, you you have Google. Have Search Little Caesars Batman, dude. Duck Duck Go that thing. Search duck, Little duck, Caesars go. Batman, and then remember, Mo just said it was cool. It, it's amazing. I'm gonna be when it. I open. I have never <laughs> taken a picture of food before, and I took a picture of this because it looked amazing. All right, it's a genius. I, you know, I thought you had limits, motion, but I think at this point, I think they just have to make it shaped like Batman. It really does not matter what it is. I, it it's shaped like this. Batman. It's cool. It All right, hold on. I will say calzones and pizza mixed together. I'm totally in for that. Thank you. <laughs> Exactly. It does look like a like a pigeon, maybe. Yeah, but I'm looking at this picture pigeon? now, and if you had not told me that this was supposed to be the bat signal, I would just think I was being robbed of like four slices of pizza here. <laughs> oh, they cut it and then they roll it up. Yeah. Cu- that's, oh, that's clever. I see what that's they're clever. doing there. That's the calzone thing they're going exactly. for. That is clever. It's absolutely awesome. You're getting more than just a pizza. 
Yeah, but the, the proportions are off because we all know the bass signal is longer than it is taller. <laughs> it changes every time, every uh, iteration. Not necessarily, is different. yeah. When you go yeah, to Keaton's, like... Keaton's was complete circle. Was Keaton's a complete circle? Yeah. I mean, I, I got to believe you on that one. So this was a Keaton's circle. was an oval. It was, it was not a an oval. It was a circle. It was. Oh, you mean the sig? You don't mean the movie logo. You mean no, the logo the in the movie. In the sky, yeah. Gotcha. Oh, yeah, well, yeah. They're okay. all they're all circular. It's a it's a spotlight. And, that's, kind of the, and that's what the pizza <laughs> what? is inspired Hello? by. The it's the bat signal. It's not the bat emblem. Thank you. <laughs> it's not an emblem. It's a pizza. It's pizza. Round pizza. Signal. Yeah. Bat signal. And it comes in that little fancy box. It was amazing. Great presentation. Loved it. Delicious. Did you save the box? Uh, it had way too much grease on it for me to save. <laughs> you, you, oh, got, okay. you didn't ask for an extra box? So you do I have limits. I, well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I try that, to keep it sanitary. Yeah. There's a picture of Batman. With this Little Caesar's pizza on his chest. Oh, I see. I, see, <laughs> that's fantastic. That looks more like the best signal. They stretched that's, it out. That's, that's clever. Yeah, I like that. Well, I'm glad I got to join you guys. You guys take care. I think we covered right. everything. Thanks for talking pizza with us. Uh, you did next it, Mo. Next week you we'll be it. talking. Um, uh, I don't know crepes in this shape of Wonder Woman. So, check do in you then. pronounce crepes? Crepes. crepes? Yeah, that sounds... it. Oh, it's so uh, bougie. No. Isn't your wife a baker? <laughs> That's the bougiest I've ever heard crepes. <laughs> your wife's like it, a master baker. You called it crepes? Yeah, crepes. because it's not a crepe. It's a crepe. It's a crepe. <laughs> if, if you go oh, to on France Welcome to America, and order son. a crepe, they're just going to look at you. We're not in France. I, nor is... would I want to be. I just want a crepe. <laughs> you, you live That's in the Midwest. We, we bring them here so we can call them crepes. No, it's definitely a crepe. It's got the little e. Uh, uh, it doesn't uh, have accent on it. No, it doesn't. Yeah, go to Wikipedia. Accent. Look My up keyboard crepes. does not have an accent thing. <laughs> well, you guys need that European keyboard. You're really missing out. Oh my goodness! Yeah, on Wikipedia, it does have that or crepe. It yeah, right there, crepe. Spellings. So, so that little it has both. It has both spellings. It says either or. Well, no, and uh, it's the bougie version to put the no, little. Okay, yeah, so. but if it was a crepe. It would have a little e. It would have a uh, accent to the right, right? Accent a droit, I think. Yeah, that that's your a sound in French, crepe. But it doesn't on it Wikipedia. Has the... On Wikipedia, it I'm has not... a pronunciation. You can listen to it. It's crepe. It's c r i some i some p, and you can listen to it. It's crepe. <laughs> yeah, that's Americanized. No, it's a crepe. That's what the little <laughs> Where... thing means. Show me your passport, that man. Not, that is not a good name for a food item. Crepe. A crepe. Mm-mm. Take it up with the French. They just invented pastry. That's oh, all. I'm good. So bougie. Stay right here. Keep so your bougie to yourself. Speaking well, of welcome, bougie. Welcome to the show, Motion. This, is, this is what you signed up for. Arguments <laughs> yeah. about I, I, I would have studied more on crepes if I knew. Crepes. <laughs> Thank, motion, good job. A crepe. I'm, I'm proud welcome. of you. I was trying to help you. I felt you were we ganged didn't. up on so. We didn't invite you here for your knowledge of French pastry. We've invited oh. you for your knowledge of Batman. Well, we covered calzones. We covered crepes. Mm-hmm. We're good. <laughs> oh, sorry. That's a uh, calzone. <laughs> that's right. Exactly. <laughs> I do actually want to move on, but I since <laughs> since motions on uh, on the line here. What's the like weirdest Batman related item you've ever seen? What's like the 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 one that really made you scratch your head more than uh, a little Caesar's pizza? <laughs> I don't think anything like that exists. If it has a Batman logo, it's good. It's got to be a good purpose for it. So I don't think so. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Nothing I can think of. All right. I, I, Ask, uh, asked and answered. <laughs> I accept it. Nothing. No, nothing I can think of for sure. Everything has a purpose and everything should have a Bat logo on it. I'm looking around my room right now to see if there's anything that doesn't have a purpose. There's a, Do you there's have... a pretty weird looking Batman and Robin toothbrush holder. I weird did. as an in inappropriate uh like how would that Ace be and gary weird or just <laughs> <laughs> no not not inappropriate okay have you ever seen a batman bible oh my no i wonder if that exists i don't, I don't know how that <laughs> we're just gonna start making up things now have I mean, you maybe seen... a bible cover but i can't imagine a branded bible yeah like... that's what i'm imagining would they would they go that far? That's what I'm wondering. That's a lot of like, writing for somebody. That's a lot of words. 
<laughs> Couldn't you just use like a uh, auto search and change all the names to Batman characters? <laughs> I think that's heresy. Yeah. Well, no, the, no, no, the, I'm not I, saying it's acceptable. I'm just well, wondering. Apparently you've tried it, so good for you. <laughs> I'm glad we're on Zoom. All right. Well, if you didn't know, we're going to talk about Batman on this episode uh, quite a bit. Specifically, the Batman, which is the most recent Batman reboot, I guess we're calling this. Uh, and uh, we're going to jump into that in spoiler-free and spoiler full forms right after a little bit of housekeeping don't forget you can watch this podcast on youtube Just go to youtube search cinerealist r double e l with an s on the end and uh watch us while you listen to us you could support us on patreon at patreon.com slash cinerealist or leave us an apple podcast review we appreciate both of those things or you could also send us a listener email to hey guys at cinerealist.com uh, we accept comments, questions, list suggestions, movie suggestions, any of those kinds of things or anything else you want to send us. And uh, we got a couple of emails this week, but we're going to hold them for next week when we have more time because there's just too much to discuss this week. So if you want to get in on the listener email, you got one more week and then the mailbag will be closed forever. Forever? <laughs> your one shot. This is your one shot. <laughs> Is this the last we're show? We're deleting I got the to account. be on the last show. <laughs> this is the last. No, just last mailbag. So. Sec- oh. Second to last. Second. What, yeah. When Zach <laughs> and James started the podcast, they decided after 520 episodes, no more listener email. Yeah. And, and we're, we are. We're gonna put. We're gonna push it one more. <laughs> yeah. But then yeah. You guys are such right. big time. That's amazing. Over 500 episodes. That's incredible, actually. Well, it, it was in the original charter, so you know. Gotta... <laughs> <laughs> For sure. <laughs> All right. Uh, any, anybody else have anything else to say before we jump into the Batman? All right. You all look very excited about this. Let's do it. Let's talk the Batman. We're going to jump into it right after this clip. What's going on? Who's the mustache with the broken nose? Iceberg Lounge. Who you think Kinsey will nights with the penguin? Oh, I'm more like just a cop. That was The Batman, a 2020 American superhero film directed by Matt Reeves. Starring Robert Pattinson, Zoe Kravitz, Paul Dano, Jeffrey Wright, John Turturro, Peter Sarsgaard, Andy Serkis, and Colin Farrell, amongst others. The official IMDb plot synopsis for The Batman is, When the Riddler, a sadistic serial killer, begins murdering key political figures in Gotham, Batman is forced to investigate the city's hidden corruption and question his family's involvement. So, spoiler free, we're starting there. In brief, spoiler free thoughts on the Batman. I think since Motion is our expert, he's got to go first, right? No spoilers. I would say it is the best comic book that I've ever watched. Hmm. What do you mean by that? Interesting. Let's let's it, dive into that briefly. No spoilers. It just it felt like I was reading a comic book. I mean, even from the style of kind of the narration and the setting up the action and then the way the action was shot, it was very much like a graphic novel. Like um, you know, you have the golden bars in the top to kind of tell you where you are in the comic books and it just kind of felt like that to me. Like it was the first time I've experienced that in a Batman related movie where it truly felt like a comic book. And I don't know the whole time um, I was just, I was engrossed by that because it just felt like it just kept turning pages. And that's, that's how my mind interpreted it. It just, it was just visually incredible to watch. Um, And I just, I loved every aspect of it. I'm trying not to talk any spoilers, but it just, um, yeah, it just it just felt like a it looked it felt like a graphic novel to me. Um, the way it flowed, the the quick pacing of it, you know how things kind of. 
I felt like things went very quickly and then they had a couple of lapses to kind of explain things and then it kind of picked up again very much like a graphic novel would um and that was and then just visually I mean it looked like panels some of the shots were so visually incredible and I love how they did a lot of wide shots and they kind of just held the camera for a second and it just it really felt like panels on a page and um to me anyway and I thought it was just beautiful that way I didn't really think of it that way but now that you're talking about it it does remind me of like like some of the most famous Batman stories aren't even like detective comic stories they're not even like main run Batman stories they're like these you know graphic novels that Mm -hmm. kind of get bigger than batman itself the main run series and it does it does kind of feel like that because also in those you're just kind of you jump into this very particular world of the batman and there's very rarely any like character progression (laughs) right exactly in those graphic novels because that's not really the story they're telling it's just batman in this very specific story uh so in that way kind of agree but um yeah i got very strong frank miller alan moore vibes from this movie especially like the year one year two comics and Mm -hmm. killing joke more in in tone than in um you know plot wise but yeah this definitely felt like you were saying james some of those more famous batman spinoff not graphic novels just in its its broodiness and its darkness in this presentation another way this might re- resemble those graphic novels is there's a lot of talking in this movie <laughs> and a lot of like detective work right. and not a lot of action which is kind of when you read comic books there's not a lot of action in comic books there's a lot of setup to the action mm-hmm. and then there's like two maybe three pages of action and then you're back to talking because really action is interesting to look at but gets old pretty fast in comic book form right also, this movie didn't have, in my opinion, a whole lot of action comparatively to, I don't know, like recent MCU movies. Certainly, there's far less action in this than there is in sure. MCU movies where like every MCU movie ends in like a 30 minute battle. <laughs> that just is not this movie for sure. It's not trying to be that movie. Um, and so that's probably more in line with an actual comic book. I agree. And MC movies, I mean, that's it's kind of chewing gum, right? And um, and the Batman movie to me is more of a calzone or a crep. <laughs> okay, interesting. Zach, what did you think? I, so I'm very fresh from this movie. I got out of the theater about an hour ago. Oh wow! Mm. So this is like I'm still processing oh, what wow. I saw. Um, I I may be more conflicted than you guys are. Um, about the film i'll have to hear more of your thoughts um there is a lot that i liked a lot of details that i liked a lot of characterizations that i liked a lot there's some things in this movie that are my favorite versions of these things from any of the batman movies but there are also some just personal taste issues i had with the film that just don't jive with what i like watching in a film Mm -hmm. You know, so just for example, we'll we'll get into it in spoilers for sure. But this is a a pretty dark film. And, uh, you know, Batman can be a dark character. Absolutely. Right. This guy is deeply conflicted because of his horrific past. And um, it lends itself. And Gotham is like just a cesspool of awfulness. Right. So it absolutely lends itself to a dark film. And uh, and this this film got pretty, uh, you know, dark. And that's just not my favorite world to live in kind of a thing. And so, so yeah, I'm conflicted about this film. There's things I did definitely like and things that I just didn't care for. So I don't know. I'll, I'll process live with you guys. <laughs> so Zach, I want to pick up on a couple of things you said, um, because when I got out of it, I saw this four or five days ago. I felt conflicted afterwards. And then the more I sat with it, the more the stuff that I liked came to the forefront and the more stuff I didn't like was seemed more minor so for for me over time i I liked this movie more i'm actually i kind of want to see the second time motion i think no you saw it probably four or five times in the last week i've seen it four times um okay. and 
the first time, well, in in fairness, the first time I see any Batman related movie, I have no idea, like because I'm just so amazed at what they're throwing at me that it's uh it's hard for me to like put it together. The second time, I can actually appreciate the movie. Um, what I loved was um, seeing it the third and fourth time. <laughs> I was actually excited. Yeah, both times, like I was pumped to see it the four, even the fourth time, and it was amazing how many details which obviously is not a spoiler here, but how many details I didn't see the first three times. So it's like, it's kind of amazing that way, how many um, layers to the movie that there are just from a movie perspective, you take Batman out of it. And I think that's what I loved about this movie. And this is the kind of movie I've always wanted for Batman. It's, it's just a great movie. And they happen to put Batman as the detective. It could have been Alex Cross. It could have been, you know, Sherlock Holmes or whoever, and it still would have been a good movie. And I think that's what I liked about this movie so much. And Zach, I totally get the part, you know, about it being dark because I think Marvel has kind of changed what people's like the average fans perception of what a comic book movie is or a superhero movie. And I think they've kind of changed that. Um, and I think more of the diehard, like true comic book fans that read the graphic novels and all that kind of stuff. I think they'll enjoy this a lot more. This is definitely not a family film in my, <laughs> you know, um, but I really think it's back to what comic book fans like in superhero movies, as opposed to what Marvel has kind of changed it to be, which is, which is great in its own right. It's just different. Um, so that's why I was excited to get back to what I consider to be a true, like comic book movie. Just for people that are listening in the future, it's Sunday. The movie came out Wednesday and you've seen it four times. <laughs> Well, there was a special screening on Tuesday that I was blessed to be able to be in. Okay. So, yeah. So, I saw it Tuesday, then I saw it uh, Thursday, Friday, and then Saturday. And I would have so seen you... it today, but we have a podcast that we record. Oh, so you... it's in... sorry to inconvenience you. So, you took it's Wednesday off? <laughs> I took Wednesday off to process it because I didn't know how I was going to react. So, I wanted to give myself a break. <laughs> Okay. I just want to point out that the two people that went to an early special pre-screening are also the two people that pronounce it crep. <laughs> uh, you think that's a coincidence, Zach? There's no coincidence. No, definitely we not. We watched Absolutely the movie not. with our creps. We loved yep. it. I had my... Uh, they brought me all my food. I put my feet up. Um, someone oh. started massaging my hands, which was wonderful. I didn't even ask for that. I don't think that's a service I was offered, but I wasn't yeah. going to say no to that. So I don't, I don't think those people work there because yeah, I didn't yeah. say no to that. I didn't see them that's, after when the lights went on. I didn't see them. Yeah, me neither. No. It, was, it was a mystery massage, but hey, <laughs> went in the theater. No, no, I, I agree with all of you that this felt like a uh, graphic novel, mm -hmm. right? I mean, and those can get pretty dark. Absolutely. Um, I love that this was a detective story. Yeah. Right. Because I think fundamentally, Batman is a detective and uh, he doesn't have superpowers. So he has to outwit people with his brain. And I like that a lot. Um, yeah. Anyway, no. I, yeah. I, I haven't really said what I felt about the movie. Yeah. Go ahead, James. And I, I think it's, feel, um, James? please. I think it's all right. <laughs> I didn't love it, to be honest. I didn't hate it, but I, uh, I definitely would, pre I prefer this direction over the dceu batman that was happening before this movie uh for sure like i had had enough of whatever they had tried to sell that version of batman to me like in multiple packages and different configurations with other characters surrounding him and it just i don't know maybe it's not fair because ben affleck never got like his own batman movie where he could be the star and he didn't have to share the spotlight with um uh with another major character but Wonder um, Woman, Aquaman, Superman, yeah, for sure. Flash. So maybe that's not fair. All I know is what I got. And what I got was like, I don't care about that Batman. And I can't really say I care about this Batman either, just because he was kind of cold. And like the thing that I feel is missing the most from this movie, and I feel like they replaced it with other things. So it's not detrimental to it, but it is notable is one, there's zero fun in this movie. <laughs> like <laughs> this is, nobody's is having fun. Movie. Yeah. I'm not sure anybody even cracks a smile in this movie through the entire thing. <laughs> not that I can remember. <laughs> and that's okay. I mean, I've watched movies where nobody, I don't think anybody cracks a smile in uh, 
Mad Max Fury, Fury Road either. Right. Yet that movie doesn't feel dark for some reason. So I don't know. I mean, this one takes place entirely at night, pretty much. Maybe that's the difference. Uh, the other thing that I feel like is missing is any real presence from Bruce Wayne. Like Bruce Wayne was in this and they would occasionally go to Bruce Wayne. And it's definitely like Bruce Wayne, like it's Batman without the stuff on basically um, without the uh, confidence that the bat suit gives him. He's just like this puddle of misery. <laughs> and then like in other Batman iterations, I think there were elements of that as well. It's just occasionally he had to act as if, and in this movie, he does not care about acting as if he's a miserable mug, no matter what's going on pretty much in this movie. Even when he goes out in public, he just looks chronically depressed. Uh, and again, it's replaced with like all, so much detective story and kind of like specifically paced uh, plotting. And I liked kind of the, the, the realistic, more realistic like suits and powers and things like that. Uh, but I can't say I didn't miss just a glimmer of like him, him acting like a playboy and getting away with it. I, I totally hear that part, but I, I, this is year two. So if Bruce Wayne slash Batman was at that level already, like we're used to seeing him, like for example, in the Nolan trilogy, he, mm -hmm. he was already like studying for like 10 years overseas and all this stuff. And then he knew what he wanted to do. So he kind of went through that part. And this Bruce Wayne is still very troubled. And he's very troubled by his experience of his parents, you know, not being there. He's resentful that he doesn't have parents. And he's also like he has this calling to do this thing where he has to put on this suit and fight crime. And he clearly doesn't even want to be doing this, but he feels like this is what he's his calling is. So mm -hmm. I feel like it was played very realistic because he hasn't developed, you know, in, in Batman, no matter what you read for Batman or watch, Batman is actually the real character and Bruce Wayne uh -huh. yeah. is the yeah. mask, right? Yep. So he hasn't created his mask yet in this year too. He's still trying to figure out how to be Batman. And now once he figures out how to be Batman, and there's a couple of things that we're not going to share because this is a spoiler free, but there's a couple of things in the movie that show us that he still hasn't figured out how to be Batman. So until he masters how to be Batman, he certainly can't create Bruce Wayne. So that's why I thought it was really well done and realistic because he ha he has this calling and he has to try to figure out how he's going to do this. And then once he gets that done, now he can step aside and say, okay, now how do I create this fictional character that makes it clear that I'm not Batman as Bruce Wayne? And then I can have this persona on the side. And that's why I think it was played like that, at least from my perspective, because it's year two. But that's my I, I put the fact that this had very little Bruce Wayne in it right. in the pro category because yep. I was like, this is the first movie where it this is a Batman movie. Right. You know, this is we're seeing the Batman and very little Bruce Wayne. And to Motion's point, this I love how they called it out that like I know that the real person is Batman and Bruce Wayne is the character, you know, that you put on. Um there were a lot of things that they explicitly point out that I thought are uh, like real Batman y things. Like the fact that Batman doesn't kill other movies, you know, he kills in other movies. He's ambiguous about it. This one, he's like, he's very adamant that he doesn't kill. And the movie sticks to that. He, he doesn't, um, I hope that's not a spoiler, but he doesn't kill anyone. And he's, um, al he's also big on no guns. I think he calls someone out yeah, for using yeah. guns. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, I'm I'm in the same camp as Zach in motion on the lack of Bruce Wayne. Totally fine with where this Batman was in his career development. Now, don't get me wrong. I love watching Bat Bruce Wayne scenes, right? Like those are usually pretty fun scenes in, in the different Batman movies. But right. I was I was OK with the fact that this one is a Batman movie. Yeah, through and through. Zach, I'm just curious. What was you said that some of the darkness that you like you didn't like? Like what 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 didn't you like about that part of it? What aspect of the darkness did you not like? Uh, OK, so some of the scenes. So like the Riddler would make these um, like live videos that people would watch and stuff like that. And they're pretty sadistic. I mean, yeah. it felt a little bit like you're watching seven, you know, sure. Mm -hmm. Um. 
or, or like some, you know, horror film or something where he's wearing this grotesque, like murderer mask and stuff like that. And it's just, I don't know. I, I don't enjoy the heavy breathing and the like, I'm killing this guy live on camera and all that kind of stuff. It's just, it's so dark. It makes that, sense. Uh, yeah. I just don't, I don't need that in my life, I guess. Sure. Um, I love I the when I when I say dark, I do not mean the cinematography because it was gorgeous. I I loved that the palette of this film was black yeah. and dark gray with the occasional bright red and like uh, it was beautiful. I'm totally fine with that. I liked the noir aspect of this. It was very noir detective kind of a thing going on. It's just when it when it veered into um some of those horror tropes of like uh you know the serial killer kind of tropes i was i was less invested sure because i guess i i guess i'd rather his villains i don't know it, the sadism of it was was hard for me i, I totally understand that i could and i felt and honestly the first time i saw it i think that's why i enjoyed it the third or fourth time so much because i think i had to get used to riddler because it it reminded me of like uh, Heath Ledger's Joker like when I first saw that I was like whoa you know and then you fast forward however many years later like they they took it up quite a few notches um, and the reason I call it kind of a graphic novel like the best comic book I ever watched was because that's what the comic books do they set up these villains to show you how necessary Batman is and how necessary it is for him to go to the levels he does and that's why I thought it was interesting, but I agree. My my concern is like every time I watched it, I was looking in the theater and I was kind of like, please don't bring kids to this. Please don't. Cause it's not, it's not a kid right. movie. And it's unfortunate that, you know, they have toys in target that make kids think this is going to be a kid's movie. Um, and that, that is my only concern with the movie because it's definitely not for kids. Um, but but yeah, that's that's kind of a typical graphic novel thing where they make the villain so hideous and they have him do something so hideous that makes you like, well, when's Batman going to show up in this? You know, you look through the pages and that's kind of what I felt like they did here. But but I hear you. It is definitely very heavy. And, when, uh, when I came home uh, an hour ago, my my three year old daughter was still awake. She was waiting for me to come home and she ran to the top of the stairs and said, um, Tell me everything about Batman. Can I go with you? Is Batman over? I want to go with you. Oh, no. Were there any scary parts? And so I had to like kind of describe this movie to her. Um, it's very hard to find anything to describe to her that she can understand. I was like, yeah, Batman, if he wants to climb a, a building, he has to shoot a rope. But Catwoman can climb up it. Like, that's pretty much all I can tell her because the movie's pretty dark. You know, <laughs> Zach, I think you need to show her seven first and then she can really give a contextualize yeah. batman oh so God. yeah yeah I, I have in my notes riddler equals zodiac slash seven slash jigsaw so that's that's yeah. the vibe i got from him 100%. and those are movies that i all appreciate to various levels but i don't know if i enjoy any of those so the fact that that riddler was channeling that darkness well i the think same it, that you saw zach was put me off Kyle, I think it's very healthy that you don't find joy in serial killers. I think that's a very healthy <laughs> character. I mean, like, I know there's people who will be like, Seven's one of my favorite movies. I'm like, yeah, Seven's a well-made movie, but I don't know mm -hmm. if I want to, like, just watch it over and over again. <laughs> when I think of, like, a, uh, like a heavy noir film, I think of, like, the, the villain is always one step ahead of the detective, and then bodies keep piling up, right? They, they keep, like, oh, here's, here's another person that died kind of a thing. This one, we watch them die. Like it's not, it's not like oh, we've discovered another person has died, and like the mystery is, keeps mm -hmm. unfolding. This one, it's like no, 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 we're gonna watch it, and it's gonna be, you know what I mean? And I was just like, well, okay. Well, one thing I was really happy with, without spoilers, there's one that we actually don't see. It gets set up, and then we're told that he died, and I was really grateful because I was like, okay, please don't go here with this maze. I'm just gonna say maze because we'll know what we're talking about. I say maze, but uh, yeah, th that was the jigsaw stuff for me, right? There. Yeah. Well, I was yeah. really glad they didn't show it. I was grateful because I was like, okay, this <laughs> this is gonna go too far. And then they kind of just really quickly go to the news and they tell you that he passed away. Yeah. Um. So we can visualize what happened, but they didn't actually show it, which I was grateful for. Oh, another thing I was grateful for: no origin flashback. 
Yeah. We didn't we didn't have to see the the pearls flying again. I'll I'll save yeah, I agree and I'll save something for the beginning that I thought happened. Um but I'll save that for the spoiler. Okay. Discussion. I want to bring up one more quick thing, non-spoilery, and that's the score. Oh, I gosh. love the music in this movie. Oh, amazing. That yeah. I like the score was good. Did you like the needle drops? Oh, the the needle drop was like I can't believe this is in a Batman movie. And oh, then they played then, it again, and I was yeah, like, now Nirvana. I'm going to associate this movie with this song for the rest of my life. <laughs> it was so out of place. I thought the score oh, was awesome, thought, but yeah. the soundtrack was a little much. Now, I thought Jay, they were both great. James is going to be horrified by this, but all those songs were new to me, so it worked great for me. I had never heard those songs before. So it was perfect for me. And it felt like it just matched like everything that they were doing. I just felt it fit. But I do have to say for anybody thinking about seeing this movie, I highly recommend if you have an opportunity to see it in IMAX, to see it in IMAX, because I saw it twice in IMAX, once in Dolby, uh, a new Dolby theater at AMC. And then I saw it in a regular theater. And it is a different movie in IMAX. Huh. <laughs> completely different movie. Not, I mean, they play it backwards in IMAX. They totally do, <laughs> and it's down. amazing to try to follow it. Especially the Batmobile going backwards is just mind blowing. No, but no, it really is a different movie because there's so. I think the audio portion of this movie is so grand, and it and it's a character in this movie, and IMAX just takes that to a whole nother level from when I've seen it in regular theaters. It's just not the same. And, and then the, uh, the fact that it's so dark, the IMAX experience is different because the blacks are more black in IMAX, obviously, right? So it's, you can see a lot more um, and you can appreciate the shadow aspect of it a lot more than I could in the regular theaters. Like it, when I see it again, which I will, it will be in IMAX because it was, it's a totally different movie. You're going to see it again in theaters? Absolutely. Why How many more times would you guess? Probably just one more time, and then maybe one more time before it leaves theaters. <laughs> like and right before one, last weekend? One more yeah. time when it gets the re-release. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> and then I'll just have it on a loop when it hits HBO. <laughs> Do you think the reason why they didn't show the rat maze Whoa, section. whoa, spoiler. What? That's not that's not I, I, I think we should save this, James. Yeah, I no, said no, no. maze. I'm just saying, I'm just saying, do you think the reason why they didn't show that is because they filmed it and they wanted a PG thirteen, but when it hits HBO Max, there will be a rated R or an unrated version of well, this. Well, there's Matt Reeves already confirmed as a four hour version that's done. Yeah. And that's what they screened at first. And then they mm. wanted him to cut it down. So I'm sure HBO Max will get the full four hour version as well. And there's a whole lot of people that will be signing up for HBO Max at that point if they haven't already. Sure. I, I think it's safe to say people haven't, for people who haven't seen that, this is a hard PG-13. I was shocked it was PG-13. I was shocked too. Yeah. yeah. From the very beginning, for sure. Yeah. I didn't know um, if I was uh, old enough what, to see it. One thing that we have not mentioned at all, but I think is a huge standout of this film, is Selena Kyle. 100%. I Catwoman yep. in this film is awesome. I love every time that character's on screen and every time that character's talking to Batman. Uh, I think it's amazing. And Zoe Kravitz was, I mean, she plays such a wide range. Like I just thought Selena Kyle character was so well developed. She, you know, you saw her emotional, you saw her tough, you saw her have to like, you know, you know, kind of like not seduce, but kind of like get information out of people. Like she had so many different layers and that's what I really liked. And every time I saw her, I honestly felt like I was looking at either an animated series or like a graphic novel because every shot was just so cool the way they did it and the way she looked. And I just thought it was yeah so well done. Like you're absolutely right. And then I, and you know, and I think we have to say something about Colin Farrell because Holy cow. That yeah. I mean, he's unrecognizable in the movie. Yeah. And the sure. act, and his accent is so great in this movie, mm -hmm. and he's funny. Like I thought he was a, he was like the comedic relief, which I was grateful for. And the way, <laughs> yeah, and the way they incorporated kind of the shadowy of the penguin aspect of it, I thought that was really clever. No spoilers, but I thought that was pretty clever. 
um, so much to that character too. And the fact that he wasn't scared of Batman, if I could say that, I guess that's mm-hmm. is it? I didn't know that that was Colin Farrell. <laughs> Nobody could unless you unless, unless you knew, you going knew in. in advance. Yeah. Um, yeah, that was that was my favorite villain in the film for <laughs> sure. No doubt, he was great. Yeah, I mean, I I didn't really have a problem with anybody in the cast. I thought they were all like, no, you know, whatever they were. No, you mean Maybe. you had a problem, or no, you didn't have. a Yeah, problem? with some of them for sure. Really? <laughs> Who'd you have? Yeah. Was it is Andy, there anybody Andy you can Circus? mention? Is that the spoiler free? Yeah, Andy Serkis. Yeah, I, I, we, we yeah. Albert was. Uh, I mean, I wouldn't say he's the little. best Albert, but I I didn't see any like, oh, I don't believe this. It was just super out of place for this film. He's like, what, X special forces or something? And I don't know. He just, he didn't seem like a butler to me. I've I've always seen Albert as like a surrogate father. And I I wasn't getting surrogate father from this character. At one point he says, I could teach you how to fight, but I couldn't be a father for you. Yeah. (laughs) It's like, come (laughs) on, man. Well, I mean, we, I think we can say some of the dialogue is a little clunky. Yeah, like th- th- there's that one line at the beginning, like the narration where he's like, I don't know, it's like criminals think I'm in the shadows, but I am the shadows. Like, oh, I OK, that's that right is totally book. is that, that is right is for the totally comic? A, a graphic novel. Line. Yeah. OK, that is yeah, a complete I mean, that is a complete line that's in like probably 10 graphic novels for Batman. Uh-huh. And then All Alfred, right. <laughs> Alfred Pennyworth is special forces in whatever they call special forces in England. That's his backstory. So and then, um, that that's a oh, oh, oh uh, yeah, Dark Knight. Um, oh, uh, oh, who Michael Caine? He's special forces. Yeah, too. exactly. Yeah, that's, that's right. Alpha. Yeah, and and so okay, so this is really gonna take my geek level to another level. So, <laughs> um, there is a prequel novel to the movie, um, mm-hmm. which of course I went to Books a Million because it's one of the few places you can get it. It's a physical store. I went to get it and I couldn't find it. And then I went up to the uh, to the uh, help desk and I asked him, you know, I'm trying to find this book. And she looked it up and she said, oh, sweetie, that's in the kids section. I was like, oh, <laughs> I was looking in the wrong section. Sorry. So um, and, and, and it actually talks about how Alfred trained uh, Bruce Wayne um, and he didn't go anywhere like overseas, like, you know, like in the Batman in the trilogy for uh, Nolan. He actually was trained by Alfred all these years. And he mm-hmm. built that Batmobile when he was like 16 and he knew um, there's a character in the movie that he knew from the orphanage. So that whole backstory is in that novel, which is really uh-huh. kind of, it's an interesting read. Um, mm-hmm. And it really sets up a lot of this movie. And Thanks. is it a children's book or just misplaced in the children's book area? I, I would call it a young adult book. I don't know that I call <laughs> okay. it a kid's book. Yeah, sure. um, but it's close. It's close. <laughs> but it was a great read. I thought it was really interesting how it set up the movie. And I thought, like, I don't know. I, I thought they should have turned that into some type of a comic book. And maybe that's in their plans. Um, because sure. I because I think a lot of fans would love it. Because it's actually a really cool story. It's really good. The uh, the Riddler character, I, I generally agree with what Zach was saying, where it was a little too, uh, I don't know. Uh, real maybe serial killery twisted yeah you know a little too saw like uh but it didn't really bother me i'm wondering if it bothered zach because it was paul dano because <laughs> i don't like paul dano because you don't like paul dano you don't like paul well here's dano. the thing here's the thing he's um these scenes i'm talking about he's not paul dano he's a guy in a mask he, it, it could be any actor it, you don't know that it's paul dano i didn't I mean, know it I knew was, it was paul until dano. he took the mask off yeah, yeah, yeah i knew it was him but that it wasn't that because you're not looking at paul dano's face <laughs> <laughs> and so I, if you had films, seen his face it would have been even have, worse well you when you see his face he's a little dopey he's a little do um, you have a problem with paul dano's face <laughs> he does I, no, hold on. I mean, Zach? I've I've about? never met Paul Dano's face, uh, so I'm not going to say I have a problem. Have there are movies, <laughs> there are movies he's in that I've given five stars, so it's not going to tank a movie okay. that his his dopey face is in it. But <laughs> dopey, <face. laughs> okay. How would you describe his face in this film? Motion, very fresh face. Fresh, fresh. <laughs> I, I would say puffy. He's just got puffier than oh. I remember. 
That's hard. Oh pounds. man, I don't think he was puffy. God bless actors. No, he looked he looked good. <laughs> Paul Dano's thriving. We talk um, about dark. Goodness gracious. <laughs> Oh, we, we said describe his face. <laughs> I'm using adjectives. Puffy. I think the hero Puffy. of this movie for me was John Turturro. Like I, I, Whoa. it's amazing how far he's come from like, um, basically just like a garbage role in Transformers movies to like this, like this is how you are a supporting character in a movie, I would say. And, uh, he brought like a specific, gravitas to what they had him doing even though he's not one of the quote-unquote superheroes in the movie he felt uh, dangerous in every scene even when you didn't know who he was exactly who he was and i thought they integrated him well i don't know how much of that story is you know canon or whether that's invented for the movie we can talk about it in spoilers sure but um but i liked having i mean i guess all the villains were normal guys but he felt the most normal and yet he was scary at the same time. I like that about it. I totally agree. When he was cast, I was a little nervous because I kept remembering him in Transformers. And I'm like, oh, what, what are they doing? But they, you know, compared to the rest of the cast, right? You know, and then, but yeah, he actually blew me away in this. I thought he was so believable. Again, he's another character that felt like he was ripped out of the comic book page, even the way they had him look. I mean, he, I mean, I just thought it was great. He looked like Falco from the comic books. And I thought he was great. Yeah, he played that character. Awesome. Have you guys only seen Totoro in Transformers movies? No, that's just the, that's <laughs> like, just the other okay. really big budget movie I can think of. I did see him in Do the Right Thing. Yeah, he's in Do the Right Thing and no, uh, Big Quiz Lebowski, Show right? and like a bunch of Coen Brother movies. So. I know he's great in okay. movies. It's just <laughs> the only other big budget franchise thing I've seen him in is Transformers, and I was not excited to see him in transformers but i was like oh wow they got john Turturro. he's a mm -hmm. real actor to be in a transformers movie and then like they give him nothing to do basically yeah, sure. in that movie yeah so all right it's not that i expected that from this but i'm glad that he had a real presence and it wasn't just you know nothing basically uh zoe kravitz uh if you guys haven't seen gemini you really should. I've mentioned it a bunch on this podcast. I don't think Kyle or Zach has taken me up on it, but Gemini is amazing, and it stars Zoe Kravitz. Gemini. And if you liked her in this, you'll like her in that for sure. Okay. I, I read a Zoe Kravitz story. Like A reporter just asked her, like, so how did you break out into film? Mm -hmm. And she's like, well, both of my parents are super famous. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Who's her mom? Is Lisa Bonet her mom? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and... And Lenny Kravitz. Obviously, Lenny Kravitz Obviously, is Lenny her. Kravitz. She looks just, just like Lisa Bonet. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Anything else spoiler free that you have to say before we jump into spoilers for The Batman? I just want to say that was a great brief non spoiler section. Great. Awesome. Anybody else want to review the non spoiler section? I gave that <laughs> section four and a half stars. <laughs> We really should letterbox it before we move on to spoilers. Five star rating. Half star is acceptable. Kyle, what are you going to give The Batman? The Batman is a solid four star. Could be a four and a half upon rewatch. But right now I'm sticking with four. It's a four for me as well. How about you, Zach? Three and a half. And the only rating that matters, motion, five star. Okay. Five for sure. Masterpiece. <laughs> perfect <laughs> um someday we're gonna have we're gonna talk batman on here motion's not gonna like it <laughs> and it's gonna be like an alternate universe because <laughs> i imagine when they finally make something you don't like they will have really gotten it wrong i mean they will have to have really screwed it up yes for you to turn on it i would say <laughs> i even like george clooney as bruce wayne so yes <laughs> for sure i would agree all right, so that's it for spoiler-free discussion on the Batman. We are entering the spoiler zone Ooh. for discussion on the Batman. So if you have not seen the movie, then you should probably hit pause now. Go watch it once, twice, three times, four times. Come on back. Take a listen to this uh, because we're going to talk everything about the movie and probably every other Batman movie as well. So be sure you've seen those as well. So, uh, yeah, spoilers from here on out. 
One, two, three. Anybody else? Anybody got something to say specifically? Spoiler filled. Start this off. I, I just want to come out and say I did not like Paul Dano's performance whatsoever. Really? Yeah. He, it, Zach, kind of like you said, the, the breathing, the screeching, like every he was just amped up the entire time. But mm. I didn't feel any menace to it. I just felt like he was just. I don't know, I felt like it was overacting to me. Like that, hmm. the one good moment is when, in, when like they're in the jail cell, because of course there's the, you know, they have to have the talk in between. And Dano, Dano or Dano? I always said Dano. 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 Okay. You, yeah. Just assume you pronounce it wrong. Crip. Oh, yeah. It's, <laughs> Whatever I say crip. is wrong. So it's crap. Yeah. I'm going to call him <laughs> Polly D for now on. Paul, Paul Crap. Uh, <laughs> Kind of reveals his plan, th- and and we, we get this sense that like he thinks the Riddler thinks that he and the Batman are on the same side, right? And then the Batman kind of is like, I, well, I don't know what you're talking about. And then Daniel kind of loses it. I thought that was good until he started singing Ave Maria, and I was like, what is this? <laughs> I just like I, I feel like every choice he made was the wrong choice, and I, I wasn't scared of the Riddler. I, I was disturbed by his actions, but. I, I at no point did I feel like he was a formidable foe. Like he was just really good at killing people, jigsaw style. Well, I mean, he's that, really that, good at that making riddles. But that doesn't scare you, somebody that can kill really good jigsaw style. That doesn't <laughs> that scares me. <laughs> like he he didn't feel like a formidable foe to Batman. Like once the once Batman figured it out, I was like, okay, this is I got this figured out. He's not a formidable foe from like a punch and kick. No perspective. I agree with that, but from a detective perspective, he was the perfect foe. But detective perspective, it, it seemed like the Riddler wanted to be found, though. Like, like he he wasn't just leaving because of maybe because of, of how was his skewed view on things. Like he wanted. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. I, I guess I didn't understand. I didn't. He thought he was on the, the same level as Batman. Yeah. yeah. Like yeah. Well, that, and the same side. Right. Yeah. 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 Right. yeah. I will say that scene between Batman and Paul Dano was awesome and the reason was because paul dano is leading us to believe that he knows uh yeah. batman's secret identity right, right. and it absolutely worked on me i thought yep. he knew bruce wayne's identity yep, and yep. he did not and it it worked perfectly and that is a hard one to sell that's a hard one to pull off and and uh and get me and it got me i and, totally and they're right he, he gets me and then he starts singing Ave Maria. I'm like, oh, you, you lost me. You had me on the hook. Well, I, I understand. And everybody has a different perspective. I guess my perspective was he's a loon, right? <laughs> to do what he's doing. So when he does stuff like that, like singing Ave Maria, you, I can, I never say never, but you can, I can probably say you'll never hear me sing Ave Maria. And the way he was singing it, like when he was so mad, that Batman said he was not on the same page as him. Uh-huh. Yeah. Like, he, he short circuited. You know it what cracked I mean? Him. Yeah. And, and that's what I thought was so great because he lost it at that point. Now he's Arkham Asylum, dude. He's not Blackgate anymore. Now he's Arkham Asylum. Cause he just, Batman just blew his brain. And then like, and again, I'm not, I'm not sponsored by IMAX. I promise. But that <laughs> scene when Batman, like what I love is they had him Batman speaking quietly the whole movie until that scene when he says Uh what have you done and he gets louder and he gets louder and when he's punching the glass every bone in your body shakes in IMAX I mean that was so loud in IMAX and it was so powerful it was incredible I mean you felt that glass shaking it was Hmm. so incredible I love that scene Motion do you have an affiliate link I could buy an IMAX ticket yeah I'll send it later it's backslash motion (laughs) IMAX.com backslash motion you get a, every time says, every time motion says IMAX, he gets fifty bucks. That's them, right. so. <laughs> Kyle, are you just sour? Oh, Kyle, are you just sour that he was singing Ave, Ave, uh, Ave Maria because it's your wedding song? <laughs> <laughs> Ave Maria was our pre-wedding song to make Megan's Catholic grandmother happy. <laughs> that is amazing, and that is totally why. Now I totally get it. Thank you, Zach. Oh. I know. I I I didn't. I we didn't want. I, I, I shouldn't say we. I don't want anything religious about our wedding whatsoever. 
Like we 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 weren't married. We were not married in a church. We were not married by like a Christian priest. We were, you know, everything non denominational. And but then you had the Paul Dano song. Yeah. Then you yeah. swung. Your wedding. <laughs> then you swung into Ave Maria. No, but our the the compromise that I made was that we would have a friend, a, fr- a friend of Zach also, a mutual friend, sing Ave Paul Maria. Paul Dano is a friend of yours? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He came in, but I mean, this is young Paul Dano. Okay. No, we had a friend sing Ave Maria before the ceremony started, and we put the singer right in front of Megan's grandmother to be like, this is the audience of one. This is who this is for. <laughs> wow. And And then she sang Ave Maria. And then we began the ceremony. It was the pre-show. All right. Well, we've gotten to the bottom of that. It's a great spoiler <laughs> chat we got going here. podcast. I hope your your grandma is not listening to this. <laughs> yeah, really. No, it's not my grandma. It's Megan's grandmother. Oh. Yeah. So, wow. yeah. So apparently that doesn't matter then. Okay. Uh, yeah. So pretty much any movie that sings Ivy Maria, be it this, Alive, I just, you know check out i mean right. I, I i've got some things i want to say let's go okay. for it I, I i one thing as i mentioned how uh this had a lot of batman isms in it that were more explicit than other films that i just loved one that he doesn't kill two that he inspires his villains that like because he exists it ups the game of everyone else and uh and that's a, a weight a burden on him right that like he is causing some of this like um, chaos in the city just by doing what he's doing. He's a vigilante and the vigilantes think that they're one of him, you know, like right. wasn't that one guy winking at him at the end that he yeah, like, he, he beat up and then he winked at him. Yeah. Yeah. I thought that was really cool. I loved this portrayal of Batman because he, uh, he just moves so slow and deliberate. Mm-hmm. I think so that he can like capture a good video, you know, like he'll pause and look at something to like get a, clear shot and oh, with, with his contact lens right yeah. yeah or like he'll just be standing there and and other people will expect him to move as they're kind of like inching over and he doesn't and they have to move around him i just <laughs> love i love this he has this imposing kind of sense of like i'm immovable when i want to be and i i i just love that characterization you know, and, and <clears throat> the overall thing sorry Mo, no, the overall <clears throat> thing is i loved his character journey in this film that he starts out as vengeance mm-hmm. and he ends out as hope. And I read someone describing it online as um, when he falls into the water at the end, you know, he risks his life to save everyone so that like the whole city doesn't get electrocuted or whatever was going to happen. And he, he cuts the cord and he falls into the thing. It's like, he's being baptized and he comes out and he's no longer vengeance. Now he's hope. And I thought that was really cool. Yeah, I love that. That's powerful. One of the things I loved was how they kind of flipped the script on Batman from the standpoint of we've always seen Batman be like a ninja. But in this one, he actually uses like the sound of his boots to instill fear. Right. Uh He does it and he does it methodically. Right. And he lets he comes out of the shadows making noise, not just like ninja out of the shadows. Like I thought that was really cool. and I've never seen that done before. And you kind of felt like the weight of the bat suit, he almost reminded me of RoboCop a lot. Um, even even the way the police kind of worked with him almost felt like a little bit of RoboCop to me. And I thought that was kind of cool and that worked. And I loved how at the beginning of the movie, the cops looked at him with such disdain. And then by the end, it all flipped, right? And they were just like, they kind of get it. And it just kind of shows you the year two that he's going through, which I thought was, I don't know, I just thought that was really powerful and really cool. And that actually is perfect, Zach. I love I love that with um with kind of how he did end with hope, which is very much like the Nolan kind of version of Batman too, right? He and that's the constant journey of Batman is to is to kind of go through what he's going through from what he experienced as a child and then how to turn that into hope. And that's always kind of the Batman story. And I love that they already delivered that, you know, in this first iteration of their of their new trilogy. It's kind of awesome. You keep referencing year two. Is that like a specific book? Yeah. Or did they say that in the, I mean, they, year they two, said that I know the that movie. they said it in the movie. They said I know there's the like movie. a series in the DC comics. That's like Batman year two, but there, yeah, um, the Frank Miller has. Yeah. Yeah. But there was very little from my memory of year two, the comic series. Correct. No, in, it's in um, this. 
Co- yeah, you're correct. I'm more referring right. to the, you know, like Commissioner Gordon, who's one we haven't talked about, who I, d- I don't know any other Commissioner Gordon anymore, even though he's not officially commissioner yet. Like, he mentions that, you know, it's only been two years, and then they uh-huh. kind of constantly remind us that he's only been Batman for two years. And that's what I'm referring sure. to. No, no comic book connection on that. That's Commissioner Gordon. He's not commissioner yet. No, he's not commissioner. Yeah, but I'm just saying. Oh, yeah, he will be, yeah. it's the That same. actor is the best. Oh, oh, oh you said best. I think they said best Commissioner Gordon. Best Commissioner Gordon. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Gary Sinise is pretty good. No. Gary Oldman, Gary you mean? Sinise? Go- Gary, Gary Sinise. Gary Oldman. Gary Oldman. Gary Sinise is my Commissioner Gordon. One of the Garys. <laughs> Commissioner Gordon, you got new legs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I've actually loved all the Commissioner Gordons, but it just it just seems like he was just made to play this role. I mean, he's so... I, and I love the the chemistry that they had that was still a little awkward and they were still kind of feeling each other out, you know? But I thought that was really well done. Um, I loved as they were kind of solving it together, you know, uh-huh. a little bit. Like sometimes Gordon would, you know, input, you know, would, would make a suggestion or whatever. And then I loved when Gordon would react to Batman like, what? You know, like, how are you getting there? And then he finds out that he that he's right, like with the whole thumb drive and all that stuff. Like, I just thought that was so interesting. And I thought it was interesting how they had Batman give some levity to a really heavy movie, like with mm-hmm. things like the thumb drive and you got a lot of cats and stuff like that. Like, I like <laughs> that they did do that because I think if that was missing, I don't know that I would have felt the same way about the movie. Like, I needed those moments to just kind of like laugh a little bit louder than I normally would have because it was so heavy. So I kind of like that they did. Yeah. Something I noticed which bothered me while watching the movie, but then the more I thought about where this Batman is on his journey, like being on year two and being a little bit different portrayal, this Batman loves the front door. <laughs> like, yeah. he, what do you mean? Like, he doesn't come through the window. Yeah, he, in he's secret. rarely sticking through the window or like, you know, going up the fire escape. He just like, he knocks on the front door, gets let in, and then. And at first I was like, what? why is Batman not sneaking around? But then, I, you know, the more I thought about it, like, A, he's new to the whole thing. Like, he's still figuring out who he is. And as you guys pointed out, Zach, especially, he's more of a he's more of a in your face Batman. He's not, right. you know, a slink in the shadows kind. Well, he, all the gags with like the twins answering the door at the hideout. Those were all great. Yeah. Yeah, it was awesome. Yeah. And, and this Batman, he kind of wants to die. Right. He doesn't really want to live. He, yeah. he feels yeah. this. So mm-hmm. that's why he put, that's why he goes to the front door. And like one of my favorite scenes, since this is a spoiler part was, as you mentioned, he keeps coming to the front door when he comes to the front door is Bruce Wayne. And he says the same thing he said as Batman. He's like, do you know who I am? Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. and then when he's walking down the hall, like, I love how he's walking. He's Bruce Wayne now, but he's walking with the same cadence. He walked as the Batman. And I thought that was really cool as he's walking down the hall, looking at these thugs on each side of him. And you can almost like, he's almost looking at them like, you guys really haven't figured this out. Like I was just here walking the same hallway, the same way. Like, I thought that was really cool. He's like, I can't believe you guys don't realize that I'm the bat. Like, I thought that was a really cool scene in that. And when you see it four Uh times, you get to see that in it. So, (laughs) (laughs) Well, can I ask you a a Batman question? Sure, please. When he goes to talk to, penguin the first time and he sees that they're like doing a, a drop of that drug or whatever they're doing a, a handoff why didn't he like beat up the penguin and and tie him up or something right then why does he just let this criminal be a criminal well because the because in, in the movie right the, the first part of his mission is to figure out who this girl is and then when he yeah. sees selena kyle's boots in that picture and he realizes that that was the same girl that just dropped off those drops now that, right. that's where his focus is right so he needs to find Selena Kyle now so he can find this girl. So it was like that was the priority at the time. And then later on, they obviously go after the penguin for the drops. Does that make sense? That, that was my sure. perception. So had he not seen the had he not figured that it was Selena Kyle was his next clue, would he have then tied up penguin and thrown him out or just left? It's a good question. I would I would think he would have go go after penguin at that point. Like like, what's his MO? Does he only stop criminals that he sees committing crimes or does he go after them like just hanging out? That's a great question because he kind of covers that in the beginning, right? In the beginning narration, he says, I can't be everywhere. 
So I have to pick, you know, my criminals sure. carefully. And that's, I think, an example of that. He had to pick right then and there. Do I go after this guy who's distributing drops or do I continue to try to find this girl? And then, I, you know, then he obviously chose to find her. And can I just say, is the introduction of the Batmobile not one of the coolest scenes yeah. ever in movie history? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, from start to finish. I have never seen, like, a director get my attention with just noise the way he did. Like where we didn't know what that noise was. You hear this, you know, this ee in the background and you see the reaction of, of Gordon. You see Selena Kyle's reaction. You see Penguin and they're trying to figure out what the sound is. And then all of a sudden down this long, you know, hallway ramp rampway, you see the Batmobile in the distance. Like, I just thought that was one of the coolest introductions that I've ever seen. I thought that was so powerful. Mo, what happened with, you know, he turned on the headlights and then he's like going to ramp up and then it's, it was almost like a false start. What was that? I couldn't tell if it was a false start or he was still trying to get the engine revved up like to where he wanted it. I wasn't sure either. Like that was like, I didn't know if it, it didn't stall out. Like I heard some, one reviewer say they thought it stalled out. I didn't think that. I thought he was just trying to get the engine going full blast is what I thought. He's weird. only been driving stick for two years, so it's just. <laughs> <laughs> and if you read that book, he built the car, he started it when he was 16, and he was a street racer uh, all those years to get the car to where it needed to be. But that's all in the yeah. book, too. Which is really and cool. how old is he in this movie? Now, well, in real life, isn't Robert Patterson, isn't he like almost 40 now? Isn't he like 36 yeah, or something? 37? Mm, wow, he's older than I thought he was. He's I could 35. Be wrong. He's, he's older than I thought he was. Yeah. I thought he was like in his late 30s or late 20s. No, I mean, he, he did Twilight almost 15 years ago. Yeah. Time flies. Yeah. Um, we really haven't talked about Robert Pattinson. We like, no, we have not. <laughs> like him as Batman. I mean, I know there was like, this was a very specific version of Batman. So like, what performance was he going to put in? Basically, if you were just reading the lines on the page, that's how you would read them, right? I mean, it's not like he's doing anything <laughs> crazy. I he's disagree. I mean, his eyes see. were very expressive. Yeah. I thought. It felt behind well, the cowl. When the only thing you can see is somebody's eyes, they're going to be expressive for sure. That's not true. A lot of people have dead eyes. <laughs> well, some people have dead eyes. I don't know about a lot of people have dead eyes. <laughs> I, uh, there were times in this movie where I was like, am I watching The Crow? Because it was oh, like yeah. very crowish. <laughs> it was Are you very. About the blackout is, in his eye? No, just the general, the aesthetic of the like, movie. Like the and nightclubs just, he was going to? Yeah, the nightclubs yeah. he was going to the, with the 90s rave music and the um, the hairstyle, the mopiness, the general gothness of all of it. I, I was just like, all right, Batman movies don't normally give me crow vibes, but this one is for sure. The uh, the soundtrack, <laughs> like something is something in the way from... Uh, Nirvana, Nirvana is something yeah. that would be on a crow soundtrack from sure. that time, sure. for sure. <laughs> like the they might as well have just Nirvana. played. They might as well have just played like Dead Souls from Nine Inch Nails and just gone full crow, which is actually on. The, yeah, which is actually on the soundtrack and sounds like that song by Nirvana. Uh, I, that being I did, said, I did love that song by Nirvana being in the movie, and I felt like the score riffed on that song through the whole movie. Oh, interesting. Like variations of just kind of like the chord strums, like random chord strums and stuff like that seem mm -hmm. to kind of be in pace with that that opening song from the, Nirvana. You guys have done obviously a you've watched a bazillion movies. Have you ever seen I don't remember too many movies where the actor just with his expressions could convey so much emotion. And like when he was when when he is Batman and then again with him as Bruce Wayne looking at the kid um, that the Riddler, you know, took care of his father, like just that emotion, like I felt that or or that like anger and disdain sometimes that he had when the police were like confronting him and he would just look at look at them like, I don't know, maybe it's I just I don't remember an actor, well, there's not too many actors you see in movies that have a mask where only their eyes can kind of communicate. But to me, it was almost like, I mean, like Mandalorian in that 
I don't understand how I'm understanding the emotion he's experiencing. Like with, with in Mandalorian with his face completely covered. And then with um, Batman just seeing his eyes, but I felt mm-hmm. like I got the emotion of what he was just brooding over or anything like that. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I thought that was pretty powerful. I mean, I, I think to be a good Batman, like you have to be able to act with your eyes. Because all you have is eyes and your jaw. Like the only thing that you can see. And I I agree. I I think you use the word broody, and I think Pattinson captured that broodiness. Um, both as Batman as and as Bruce Wayne. Uh I, I read that Matt Reeves wanted this Bruce Wayne to be inspired by Kurt Cobain, which is yeah. fitting for the it entire aesthetic. Yeah. yeah. Um I, I really liked that they showed batman take off the mask and he had the black eye makeup on because it's since my understanding is every batman at least since like uh yeah keaton has had black eye makeup on correct and you never see them without the mask on with that eye makeup and like it, right. you know it, and it's fine like I, it doesn't take away from any other of those movies but i thought this was actually interesting to show like oh yeah like afterwards he's got this like sweaty crow mascara going on and it, it fit the whole character totally agree and i love the fact that he had the bat suit basically in a backpack all the time which totally yeah, makes yeah. sense right yep so instead great. of walking into the building as batman he just walks in as this normal dude with a hoodie and then he goes somewhere and changes like i just thought that made sense right because then when he leaves someplace too he doesn't have the batmobile with a big bat logo sitting in the front of the building you know where anybody could follow him or whatever i thought that was like that was really different for Batman, right? Like that's been done in the comics, like in a really small version where he has like this, um, it's like a, it's like a small version of the suit, like really thin version of the suit uh-huh. that he had like an at a shake case. That's the only time I've ever seen that done. And I just thought that was a really cool element to add, you know, especially like in the funeral, you know, where he kind of just goes off in the corner and changes basically. And then comes back as Batman. Like he never left the building. I thought that was pretty cool. Let's talk plot, which we really haven't talked much about. So uh, if, from a canon perspective, it, um, Bruce Wayne's parents being involved with organized crime, is that a thing that's happened in, this com- in the comics before? Yeah, especially with uh, his mom being in the same asylum. That, that's actually very comic bookish in a lot of different um, arc story arcs. Okay. Really? Yeah, th- this is the first time I've seen that storyline of yeah. the mom being in the asylum. Yeah, no, I didn't know that her maiden name was Arkham. That was new to me. I don't know if that's okay. I was curious about that. That part I don't know. I'm not sure. I've never. I don't remember that ever before. But because be. it seems like two power families, right? The Waynes and the Arkhams. Right. Yeah. Yeah, and wasn't where did they get the name Gotham? Was that another family? Ooh, that's a it's actually pronounced Got Ham, <laughs> um, and just over time, you've lost the translation. <laughs> There is one thing I noticed in this movie that I've never seen in any other movie. The New York City area code is 212. The Gotham mm-hmm. area code is 221. I thought mm. that was wild. I've never seen mm. the area code of Gotham before. Yeah, I liked the visual representation of Gotham in this, too. Like It was oh. very New Yorkish, but then you were like, okay, that's Central Park, but there's roads through it. You know what I mean? Like It, right. it, was, it was the same but different type of thing. Sure. Uh, but it was so dirty. <laughs> but so realistically trash. dirty yeah like somebody just you know all the trash collectors that have gone on strike or something for 10 years um that you wouldn't want to live there for sure but it was still like a, a city yeah, that you'd you know i don't know i don't know what i'm saying it just, it just was like very realistic for me Absolutely. anything else uh Oh, I'm reading something on Wikipedia that I didn't know that is spoiler. Is that Barry Keegan's in this movie? Oh, yeah. At the so very end. His name is in the credits, like when they do individual credits at the end. Right. Barry Keegan's was listed like like fourth or fifth build. I'm like, who the heck was he? And then in the scroll credits, he's named as uh, unnamed Arkham patient or something like that. Prisoner, yeah. prisoner, which we can attest is probably Mo. The <laughs> this is the spoiler section. I know. This is you, you can say it. I want Mo to say it. I, I thought he'd be excited about You're this. Maybe. About Joker. Yeah, Joker. 
Oh, okay. I thought I didn't that was Two-Face. Two -Face. No, I think that's supposed that to be Joker. Joker. That was, that was Joker. not yeah, Two-Face. Two-Face is Harvey Dent. Yeah. No, I understand that, but he never says his name. And well, from what I could see, I've only seen it once. Motion's seen it four, so I'm going to... Yeah. Uh, I'm going to... Whatever motion he says, says I'm going to go He says with. he's a clown. Yeah, he calls himself a clown. He says, like... And then, yeah, he, he's definitely a Joker for sure. 100%. 100% on that one. I don't think... Uh, I don't think Heath Ledger ever calls himself the Joker either. No. James, why did you think he was Two-Face? I himself the Joker. Because the way the shadows were... You were only seeing half of his face and it looked kind of, you know, messed up. Now, it could have been messed up because Joker has a messed up face. But the fact that they were keeping it so that you could only slightly see that half of his face was messed up made me think it was. I got you. No, that's that's fair. Also, what makes me think it's Two-Face is because they already have another Joker out there. I think they want to integrate it into this at some point. Use I hope not. You shake oh, your head no. Wait, you're talking I think Joker they're remember. making... Leto Joker? No, he's talking about Joaquin Phoenix. I'm talking about the one that became the highest grossing dollars. rated R movie oh, of all time. But, no. but Joaquin Phoenix <laughs> that they was, absolutely... like, that was the 80s. Like, I, yeah. I don't think... <laughs> he's so old now. I don't, yeah, it would be like 70-year-old Joker. <laughs> I don't think they placed this movie. Did but, they? Uh, I mean, this but, movie didn't it, feel like a period piece. Like, I mean, people had cell Joker phones, did. So I, I guess yeah. it would have to be cell phone era. He, he has lenses that have cameras in them. So, yeah, yeah I'm just like saying. All of us had in the 80s. Come on. I'm Zach. not saying they will, but I guarantee you there's people at Warner Brothers who are salivating over connecting this movie nope. to that one. I, I'm, I, I am Whether surprised. they'll get the creatives to eventually do that, I can't tell you for sure, but... If you, if they could convince them to do it, it's happening. Well, they already introduced Joker at the end of that movie, and it's clear that that's the actor that's going to play. Um, oh, James, I'm pretty sure 75 percent of this, the people on this call are 100 percent convinced that that's the. There's no question that's the Joker, but it's also like the questions are: Does Batman? Did Batman put him in Blackgate? Because it's Blackgate. He's not in Arkham Asylum. So did they put him in Blackgate? How did he get in Blackgate? Is he a criminal that everybody knows? Like, those are all the questions that I had when I saw him already incarcerated. I was like... Wait, why is it not Arkham? Because um, that was Blackgate. They, um, well, I thought it was Blackgate. Mean? I don't even know what Blackgate What's Bla is. What is Blackgate? Blackgate's Black a prison. Arkham Asylum is an insane asylum. And oh. Yeah. yeah. He was in Blackgate. Interesting. I mean, why would you? They both should be in an insane asylum. Well, actually, <laughs> you know what? Characters. I take that back. I think Gordon may have said that. He, no, Gordon did say he was at Arkham. I'm actually wrong. It was Falcone that was going to go to Blackgate. You're, that makes sense. You're right. Yeah, it was what, Arkham. That makes Asylum. sense. Was Riddler at Blackgate when he confronted the Batman between I think the glass? That, I think that was Arkham. I think that, that was, was Arkham. Arkham. Okay. Now okay. that I think about it, yeah, I have to correct myself. Yeah, that was Arkham. Okay, can I say my biggest nitpick with the film? And this is the tiniest little thing, but it annoyed me because it totally did not have to be this way at all. It's the laziest part of this movie. Go for it. Anytime they showed like an online community or like chat room or like anything like that, it was the worst. Okay. <laughs> Specifically, so like he goes live and then there's this little counter in the corner that's just like rapidly counting up numbers. And it's just so fake looking. And then later he has this like last video, right? The last video that he posted with his little group of 500 followers. And there's like this chat um, section to the right of it. And the like chat messages people are leaving are like, um, don't forget your cling film. And uh, hey, rifles are good. And then the very last comment is rifles good. What caliber? Yeah, what gauge? And that's... A yeah, what? Yeah, I think it, that was the last message left on this chat. Is what caliber? And <laughs> it's just so silly. It, it was this this dumbest thing because, like, first of all, someone that's going to be participating in this group and like going to be one of these people on top of the stadium or the square thing, or whatever, they're not wondering what caliber rifle they should bring. They know they know about rifles already. They're already bringing a certain gun if they're going to bring one. They're not like. I, it just it seems so silly that this was the chat that would be on the side is like oh we should bring rifles is the second to last comment that someone said is like this well organized like militia plan and the second to last comment is oh rifles are good we should bring rifles it just was so silly 
and that he started his message was like, guys, thanks for for watching and for all the help with the detonation things. Please, he all the time was an influence. Left. He was like an influencer. Yeah, like <laughs> that's what I thought. Just, I thought that was funny. I thought they were just kind of having fun. No, it that. was a joke. Yeah, yeah. it was absolutely a joke. It just was out of place for like how gotcha. crazy sadistic this guy was and all of a sudden he's just like a you know a youtuber gotcha but those I, comments ah oh. I, I would abso- absolutely a hundred percent did not bother me one little tiny bit <laughs> me neither. can i tell you though like one of the coolest things what caliber <laughs> one of the coolest things i thought was this was the first time we've seen batman scared of heights like do you guys remember that scene? Right. Oh yeah, I forgot about when that. When he's running away from the police, you know, when he and Commissioner Gordon had kind of make that agreement, and then he tries to escape from the police, and he goes up the staircase, and then he's at the top of this gargoyle, and he looks down, and he just gasps because he's so high, and then he then he ignites the wingsuit, which you can tell he's done that for the first time because he pops the parachute incorrectly. And then winds up, you know, kind of getting hurt a little bit. Like, I thought that was a really cool ad. First, to show him scared of heights, because that's real, right? Like, no matter if you dress up as a bat, see heights for the first time like that, you're going to be a little nervous. And then also popping the shoot at the wrong time. Like, it just shows yeah. you how he's learning. He's still trying to figure this thing out. And Is that it before shows- or after he repels down a, that was before. a un- unfinished building? Yeah, before. Okay. Uh- and it so he gets over you, his fear, his lack of height. He got over of heights yeah, pretty he got fast. Over. It shows you an important thing about his character too, because that's a genuine fear, right? Like it's an automatic response, and then he uh, he overcomes it mentally. He's just right. mentally stronger uh-huh. than his fear because he has to in that moment. That's awesome. Yeah. And you see that you see those like gears turning in his in his eyes. Uh, Going back to text messaging, and this this might be unrelated, but I've noticed, and now that I mentioned this to you, you guys will notice as well, that like 99% of the time when they show text messages on television shows or movies, even if they're texting with their best friend, the text will be, the text chain will be brand new. Like the only yeah. bubbles are on the screen will oh, be at yeah. the top of the conversation. Yep. And all you'll see is pertinent information. So you want the rest of that. But it's like it's like their best friend and they've deleted the old thread and started this one. So you only have the bubbles at the top of the conversation. When well, everybody I mean, knows the new ones are at the bottom of a conversation. Batman's smart. He only keeps those for a day. He doesn't want to leave a paper trail. So that's right. Oh, this movie didn't do that. It had comments all the oh, way down good. the side. Okay. They just annoyed Zach. <laughs> Those comments did. Well, they were so <laughs> inane. They were so inane. Have you watched a live YouTube video and looked at the comments? I mean, those were Shakespeare compared to normal <laughs> live chat comments. No, these are people that are about to plan this like like uh, secret terrorist thing. <laughs> and and their second to last comment is rifles are good. But, <laughs> so but I think that was part of the thing is that they aren't people who have rifles they're like other incels yeah. that he's rounded up and have has convinced that they need to do this even though like, they know nothing about what they're doing they also weren't marksmen like they sucked at shooting clearly. from the from the top of a and, and, stadium and one guy brought a shotgun he didn't even bring a rifle <laughs> i don't know what he's planning to do with that thing he was the one asking which gauge he's not exactly. the smart one so he's like hey i'm gonna show up what which, which gauge should i use nobody answered him so he brought a shotgun i mean oh man and he literally could have killed batman if he didn't just stand there for 10 seconds just kill batman and then the whole thing with selena kyle jumping on him was so dragged out it's like he could have killed batman right there well yeah but what about that venom venom yeah when 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 selena kyle was pulled off by that one guy and the one guy was gonna stab her oh yeah that was he sweet reaches in i think that was venom. adrenaline yeah what's that i don't know what venom is but just so like adrenaline venom is what bane uses oh is it like, bane yeah 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 so so he pulled out it was a green substance and and venom is green so i assumed it was venom but i don't know um that was sweet oh when he got into that manic mode too that was yeah. incredible he snapped out of it pretty fast. I wanted him to like punch a couple more people on his way out. <laughs> so can can we ascertain that even though Batman <clears throat> saved the day, he like he saved the elite from this mass shooting, 
still mm-hmm. hundreds and not thousands of people in Gotham died from flooding from the tsunami. Yeah. Like yes, the 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 1% are a okay at the end of this movie. <laughs> but the people like I mean, you you there, we saw people living on the street. We saw how decrepit the city was. I'm guessing Gotham is in a pretty poor shape after this movie. Which could yeah. set up one of two things. It's zero, um, year zero, or um, oh, what's that book? Um, no Man's Land. Those okay. are the two storylines where Gotham is flooded. Those are the two storylines that I know of where Gotham gets flooded that way. Hmm. I didn't even know Gotham could get flooded, period. Yeah, it's happened so a couple I, I like that. Yeah, it was surprising to me. Um, I mean, maybe they didn't address that. But you got to give the credit where credit is due. This is like the first big budget anything, much less comic book movie, to have the term white privilege in it. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I was like, wow. I mean, where did that come from? I mean, I I love it. I thought it was awesome. Uh, but man, I mean, you watch a couple YouTube videos and they're basically asking for people to make like incendiary videos by just including that term. Mm -hmm. Right. It was like, it was like the two words that birds, probably a million YouTube videos, just including that term in the movie. Um, I thought it was awesome. (laughs) And it made sense. Not like they jammed it in there. Like it made sense that uh, the Catwoman at that moment was saying it. Um, were they literally saying he hasn't named himself Batman yet and that he wanted to go by vengeance? Like no. as a character name? Because they no. never say Batman. They and never call him Batman? No. No, they don't. At one point, Catwoman says Riddler does. Like, Riddler does. Oh, Riddler calls him. Oh, Batman. Yeah, right. And well, all the, Cat, all the Catwoman notes. says it too. He says, yeah, for the Batman. Oh, yeah. All the notes yeah. are to the Batman. That's but, true. Well, I, I would say by saying the Batman and not just Batman, like Riddler is saying, okay, there's this guy who dresses like a bat. It, it seems like maybe Riddler was naming him. Yeah. Right, but Isn't whenever he, he refers Batman to himself, he calls himself Vengeance. Yeah. Does he think his name is Vengeance? Like his whatever you call His it, superhero his... name? Yeah. Used, used to be. At the beginning of the movie, anyway. Not at the end of the movie. Sure. Ah. Yeah. But yeah. I thought he was just being... Yeah, I don't know, metaphorical when he cheeky. said I'm vengeance. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, I was gonna say cheeky too. <laughs> no worry. Yeah. <laughs> but it, um yeah, he's the, I think he's the Batman. <laughs> but it does make sense that this like this version, right? It's not like I mean, he doesn't seem like the kind of guy that's gonna call himself Batman. Right? I mean sure. it doesn't seem like that kind of Batman that he's gonna call himself that. So I could I that's kind of interesting because I could see that where like maybe you know the news called him Batman because he's dressing up as a bat, right? But, but I, I, I can't like see. It. Yeah, I can't see him feeling that, like getting really excited about being called Batman. Well, let me ask you this: When he designed his costume, why did he give himself little spikes on his hat so he could put those hearing sonar things in there? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, gotcha. They don't make a connection between him and bats like other movies. They do. do. Well, he remember he goes the he's gravitates to the cage with a bat in it, and he's got bats in his bat cave. When it, when Gordon oh, says, treat as a bat's his bat cave. You're right. Yeah, yeah. I was but, confused about that too. When he first goes to the bat cave, was that to insinuate that like Wayne Manor had a subway station underneath it? So again, if you go to Books a Million and you get the book, it explains this. Um, <laughs> okay. And actually, in this the, is this is in the children's section, book. James. Just so in know. the children's <laughs> section, so easy to find. Um, they actually have, they do have this in the comic book too, where, um, where Batman has several subway stations that were closed that he kind of converts. So there are, he has like sub bat, you know, caves kind of thing. But uh-huh. in, in this story, that was a private, uh, subway station for the Wayne family. Like you see in the background that there are subway cars there and they used to take that subway car wherever they wanted to go and they could go to this private place which is in the basement of wayne tower then they go upstairs to their tower to their you know multi-level condo so that was that, and that's what he was using and you'll so, see the bridge says wayne tower so we never oh it says tower i yeah uh, i probably my brain probably just finished it as manor um so in this movie we never actually see wayne manor we just we do. see wayne tower that's the orphanage is wayne manor the orphanage oh. 
Mo, how rich is Bruce Wayne? Is he Elon Musk rich or like eight times Elon Musk rich? Yeah, I think he's like Saudi Prince rich. Okay. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, way more than Elon Musk, I think. Okay. Because his father was into so much. And that that was, was the one. Dad a doctor? Yeah, if I could have one gripe about the movie was the casting of Thomas Wayne. That did not seem like a dude that had money to me. Like, he just seemed, he just didn't seem that level to me. Like, I've seen other Thomas Waynes in movies that I was like, oh, yeah, it's totally believable. But this one, I wasn't quite sure. And maybe it was just because he was a politician and he looked different to me. Um, but yeah, that was my only nitpick on it. How did he make money? Like, was he a doctor? Was a doctor. I mean, how did, he, how did he become crazy rich? Doctor philanthropist was kind of what he did. But I guess doctors got paid really well. And he had family money. He had family money, too. Okay. I mean, this movie does the noir thing where they introduce a fund of some sort at the beginning yeah. and you're like okay well obviously everyone is <laughs> abusing that fund hmm. oh you figured that out right away i actually well, I it's, it's, just, it's just a trope of like oh, yeah gotcha, I mean, I've, gotcha. I've just seen enough of these of this style movie where the minute someone's like oh yeah here's the new renewal fund I'm like well, okay well that's definitely a cash cow for all the sure. all the gangsters commonly sure, known sure. as Chekhov's fund Chekhov's fund yeah <laughs> right Yep. Um, another thing that I wasn't sure is canon is Falcone and Catwoman. Falcone being Catwoman's father. Is that yeah. a thing? I've never heard that, but um, right. Falcone being operated by Thomas Wayne, that is canon. Okay. Okay. Interesting. Is this the the first time we've seen, or I, I, I guess so, the first time we've seen in the Batman movie the, sort of the shadier side of, of the Wayne family? First time I've ever seen it outside of, like I mentioned, he did, he did, um, it was his duty. So when Falcone came at his doorstep, he didn't want to save his life, but he knew that he had to as a doctor because uh -huh. he had the ability to do it. So if that could be considered shady, that, um, and then the only other thing was, um, was Martha Wayne. They, they have, like I mentioned before, they've had things where she was, um, had some mental health issues. Okay. Right, but not in the movies, right? This is the only movie. Correct. Correct. Yeah. Only yeah, movie like, in the movies, the Waynes are saints all the time. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Opera love and saints. There was a couple Any of things. If, oh, go ahead, Rachel. Yeah, sorry, no. Sorry. I was going to say anything else spoiler free. Hit us. The only thing that I wanted to mention, because I thought it was really cool, I love how, um, like, I would love to interview Matt Reeves and ask him because I feel like. He had so many like tributes <clears throat> to the other Batman movies. Like when Batman is about to cut uh, that electric cable so that it doesn't go down and electrocute everybody. Mm -hmm. That reminded me of Adam West when he was on the uh, bat copter line and the shark was trying to get him. And then he eventually sprayed shark repellent on him. Yeah. That reminded me of that scene completely. And I would love to ask Matt Reeves if that was kind of like in honor of that, because <clears throat> even the way it was shot looked different and it looked like that to me. Then I thought it was really cool and interesting that in dark Knight, if you guys remember that a bunch of people dressed up as Batman and tried to fight crime and then Batman has uh -huh. to intervene and they say, what's the difference between me and you? I'm not wearing hockey pads, you know, like, uh -huh. and I thought it was interesting that this was the opposite because this is what happened with Riddler. And there's all these different people who were playing to be Riddler. Like I thought that was kind of to the dark night. And then, um, and then even the club fighting scene, you know, was also in Nolan's universe. And I felt like, I just felt like there was a lot of things that he took and there was a lot of Burton feel. I felt, you know, peppered throughout the movie, like a modern version of, of Burton, but still a little Burtonese I felt was in that movie a little bit. And I just thought it was really cool. There were so many things that I was like, okay, that reminds me of the 89 Batman. That reminds me of this. That reminds me of that. But not a copy, but just like almost like we're making it somewhat familiar. You know, and I mm -hmm. thought that was kind of cool that he incorporated that. I would love to ask him because I haven't seen an interview where anybody's asking those questions to see if that was just my impression or that was really what he was trying to do. No, I can feel it. I mean, as a, as a movie that, uh, what is this the fifth reboot in my lifetime <laughs> of this series sure. uh i think they did a good job of making it feel comfortable but also giving us a little bit 
of a variation on a character that we've seen over and over again. But I think generally they've done that every reboot. You know, you got the uh, you got the Michael Keaton version, and then let's let's say Val Kilmer and George Clooney were just doing riffs off of that. Yeah, on some I agree. Level. Yep. And then you got the Nolan, obviously reboot, and uh, now you and then you got the Ben Affleck one, and then you got this one. I feel like you put those four Batmans together, and they're very different styles of the same character. Um, I forget where I was going with this, but I I agree that it was like a it was a good riff on those without being those. Totally agree. And the last thing is the Batmobile scream. That was the same one from the Tumblr. I swear it was. Hmm. Like when oh. he was when he was calling Alfred, when it said calling Alfred in that one part, which was I thought a really great scene. That I swear that was the same screen that was in the Tumblr. That's awesome. Oh, I had a question. The very I think it's maybe the first shot or one of the first shots where they're looking through the binoculars at a kid that like stabs his dad, and you think like they're at, he's actually killing him, and then you realize it was like a game. Um, was that who who was looking at who? That that, that was, was the Riddler. That was the Riddler looking at the the uh the guy who was running for mayor that he was that he later kills. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. But what I thought was interesting you bring that up because when I'm watching it, I thought, oh, I thought they weren't doing a Batman origin story. And I thought that's what they were gonna do. I thought they oh, were gonna yeah. go downstairs and then they were gonna get killed and the boy was gonna be left alone because the boy was dressed as a ninja. You know, and I was right. like, okay, so they're trying to tell I, me that's Bruce Wayne. I thought that was young Bruce Wayne when I was watching. I did too. I did too. The, yeah, at first you think that's what you're watching. I agree. Yeah. And and then um, with that scene, I thought it was interesting that that was the same thing that Batman did later for Selina Kyle, was looking through the binoculars, and I felt like they were doing the parallels between Riddler and kind of in Batman a little bit that way too. I thought that was interesting. Well, this bothers me then because I think we get two binocular scenes from the Riddler. And they're different. They're different binoculars. Like the the digital thing at the bottom showing like how far away the subject is are are different. So he's, he 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 ha- he switches them out. What's the second binocular scene from the Riddler? I thought there was a second one with him. That was I, Batman. I, that was yeah. Am I thinking of the Batman one? Yeah, that was Batman. Yeah. The binoculars. That was a little leery too. <laughs> I think it was supposed she, to be. When she was changing, I was like, "Should you be looking away now?" Yeah, come on, man. <laughs> but you know, that's just me. Um, we, so there's not a ton of action in this movie, which we mentioned, Mm -hmm. uh, two things I thought about that one, that hallway scene where he's fighting, it's only being lit by the muscle flash. That was awesome. Like I I could have used, I could have used a minute of that. It was, it was brief, but it was pretty cool. And then the, some of the fights in this reminded me of the fight choreography from the Arkham games. And oh yeah, Mo. I'm sure you've probably played them. I don't know if yeah. James or Zach you played any of the Arkham. You totally see that games, but like, like the idea is, oftentimes you have six or seven bad guys attacking you, and you can chain your moves together in like this cool fluid motion, and it's awesome. Like it's it's one of the best Batman fighting video games that they have, and the fight choreography in this movie felt like Arkham inspired, like how he was just kind of chaining these moves together and able to fight five, six bad guys at once. And it was, it was awesome. Yeah, I totally agree. Even the way he moved was very much like yep. that. Yeah, you're absolutely yeah. right. And, and that's one of the things about the subway scene that I thought was so cool because he was trying to pummel that first guy so that everybody else would just run away. And then yeah. I love, he looks up and he's like waiting for them to run away and they don't. And he almost like gets up and like, is like, okay. You know, like, like, I just thought that was so cool because he was just like, I'm trying to make an example out of this dude. So you guys will go away and they don't, you know, and it's like, you guys aren't smart enough to realize, you know, and I thought that was yeah. kind of cool, too, because it showed you how he's still trying to figure stuff out, too. I love that. Moment. This is literally one of the only movies I've ever seen that has a group fighting one guy where it doesn't feel like they're just kind of waiting their turn like awkwardly like this felt like how a group would try to fight one guy it felt absolutely realistic um no other movie does it like this one did totally agree especially when they grabbed his cape which i'm always waiting for somebody to do right because if that batman's down smart to just grab his cape and drag him and they did that in this one didn't work out well for them but they did do that And, and i thought the batmobile chase scene 
if you took the Batmobile out of it, I still think that is one of the coolest action car sequences I've ever seen. I thought that was a lot of fun, and it felt so real. It was so good. Yeah, agreed. What did you guys think of the uh, the post credit stinger? <laughs> I thought that was. Funny. I did not stay for it. I did. <laughs> I, st- I stayed for it twice. Another Mo, thing. what's on that website? <laughs> have you gone to the website? No, actually, I have not. Oh, I went to the website. You know, it's it splashed it for like a three frames or something at the end. Yeah, it's. it's Do you know what I'm talking about, Mo? I have no. no idea I don't. Okay, so I, so I at the very about, end. Yeah. Yeah, let me tell people. At the very end, you have like a you know a computer text box or whatever from the Riddler saying whatever he says, and then for like three frames as that disappears, it shows a URL, the same URL that he uh, he had earlier in the in the movie. The El Rata one. Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. You yep. see it for like it's such a short amount of time. It's like two or three frames. Wow, I didn't catch that. Wow, nice. I didn't know about that. And you went there, Kyle. I did. Um, What's and- there? You can like talk to the Riddler, and he gives you riddles to answer. And oh, that's if fun. you're that's good fun. at answering them, I you probably learn things. But I'm not good at answering riddles, so Do you learn <laughs> about ga- gauges and how to break into a <laughs> stadium. Yeah, and um, where to buy a gimp mask? <laughs> it wasn't a gimp mask; it was a winter war mask or something, right? But that was one of the yeah. comments. Someone like found the mask and said, "Oh, hey, it's a." arctic combat mask or something like that Hmm. which is easy to put your glasses over which i appreciate so (laughs) (laughs) oh that's cool i gotta check that out after anything else like a gim mask i was surprised there wasn't like a zipper on the front mouth or something for sure yeah um i also didn't think he was very good job at trying to hide his identity like he just put himself in situations where he could have been unmasked a couple times like he gets captured by the police and then they decide to wait until he wakes up to try and take his mask off. And I just feel like if he was knocked out, the first thing they would do is like, let's see who this guy is. And they moved him to a new location. Yeah. yeah so like, he was precinct. out for a while. And they see, never to me, thought, that was just, it's comic book logic. You got to go with it sometimes. Well, yeah, but even like, uh, <laughs> didn't, didn't Nolan's Bruce Wayne or Nolan's Batman have like, uh, charge it, like electrical charges on the mask. So someone tried to touch it one time and they got shocked. And... Yeah. Joker tried to touch it and he got shocked. Now, that's what, yeah. What I thought it was. And again, that's my, that's my perception is it was a tribute to the 89 Batman when he gets knocked out and the criminals are like, they want to, let's take off his armor. It's like, it looks like putty. You know, they say whatever and they try to peel it off. And I thought it just reminded me of that scene. It was shot the same. Like Uh the angle was the same. The overhead. Yeah. Yeah. I thought it was. And that's what I thought he was doing with that. And then, you know, you see his eyes go. And then one of my favorite parts about that scene is when he said, when one of the police officers says, now we've got you on assault of an officer. And he was like, it was three. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) I love that. Yeah. Oh, and I love how, um, uh, uh, Gordon said, yeah, you know, you could have thrown the punch. And he's like, I did. That's right. <laughs> exactly. That was great. Or you could have held or held the punch. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. yeah. That was awesome. Yeah. I did. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm excited to see this again. I, the, the more we talk about it, and, and especially Mo, the fact that you've noticed all these things, I, I really want to give it a second chance. And may, maybe Paul Dano will work for me a second time around now that I know what to expect from it. But I, I think the biggest thing is getting over how shocking Riddler is. I think yeah. once you get kind of, numb to that and almost desensitized to a certain extent <laughs> then you can enjoy the movie more because that's that's what helped that's what held me back at first and then when you see it again and you kind of get used to what the riddler is going to do you can really kind of appreciate the movie at least that's how it was for me zach you can make a cut for me where every time he sings ave maria just put a different song <laughs> in yeah your choice what song would you whatever yeah, okay yeah it's uh dealer's choice yeah for sure <laughs> I thought it was pretty bold to make like his theme, you know, like whenever he he's on screen that that's the theme that they have for him in the film to be such a famous song, you know, like that's now the Riddler theme. Is that, yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, gotcha. Yeah. In comparing I, this to the Joker, uh, I I look forward to watching this one again. Whereas the Joker I watched once, I'm probably going to see it once more just to kind of like solidify my feelings on it. But I, I'm willing to bet a rewatch is not going to inspire me to watch that movie repeated times. No, I only saw the Joker once. 
because it's so dour that movie and i think this one is also dour but just like fun dour not like super depressing <laughs> like human misery dour <laughs> like, yeah, exactly yeah, yeah i don't know but James, i'm i'm also somebody who's watched seven probably five or six times though so i'm i guess i'm that great. crazy person seven is great you should just watch it seven times like the title says you should oh nice well, well, I got to hit seven in my lifetime, so I got to spread them out. Oh, well, okay. Don't don't wait too long. <laughs> <laughs> this is like a threat. <laughs> I, uh, I know, right? Got to watch my back. I, I do think there is one way they could connect Joker to this movie. Mm -hmm. And is if that they have this Barry Keegan Joker was maybe inspired by Walking Phoenix Joker. Because that kind of be seen to be like the point of, the Joker movie was, you know, he, even though he was a terrible person, he inspired all these other people at the very end of it. Maybe I, he's two face and the clown comment is because he was inspired by the Joker. <laughs> so I could maybe see them like showing a clip of like, uh, him on the, you know, walking Phoenix, his character on the talk show mm -hmm. and being like, Oh yeah. When, when he did this, that inspired the blah, blah, blah. And now we I mean, have that Joker. Joker would still be alive. Yeah, I'm. I, but I'm just saying this. This Joker is not Joaquin Phoenix, so if they want to tie the two together, they yeah, can. They can bring him in without making him like the main Joker. That Joker might not even be the Joker. He is the Joker. It might Barry, just be a guy who's shoot. talking about clown. No, yeah. <laughs> Dave, I don't know why you are so so. Uh, I'm saying he doesn't have to be Two Face sense. either. I'm, I'm just mean, saying it, it could be not Calendar too. Man. I, nothing I, I, I don't know. Nothing about him. <laughs> I think Clayface. Hey, I Calendar was, Man's a real villain. I know. I, I know that. He's Killer I, Croc, clearly. I think it was Poison Ivy, to be honest. <laughs> I just really got Poison Ivy vibes. You know, X Men crossover. And, yeah. Was yeah, they could gender swap uh, Poison Ivy? That was cool about the cards, too, right? Because all the cards symbolized a somebody from the Rose Gallery. I thought that was really clever, too. What do you mean? Oh, I missed that. No, yeah. Right. Each of the cards that Riddler had. So the first one was Court of Owls because it was an owl. Um, the second one, well, I remember there was one with eyes, which is also Court of Owls. But then there was a, uh, they had a woman and she looked like Poison Ivy. Um, hmm. There was a couple of, I think there was a couple of other cards. But each one, like, loosely, oh, there was one that was like Mad Hatter. Um, sure. So each of the cards looked like it was kind of referring to uh, somebody in Rogue's Gallery, which I thought was pretty cool. That's cool. I hope it's not Joker in that final scene. It is it Joker. Is James, you can. I, I don't believe it. Wishful. It. Uh, that's fine. You can you can Why? not believe it, but it's the truth. Uh, because I, how many times are we gonna do? Uh, you can do Joker. Just do it down the line. Like, let's get a good Doctor Freeze on screen. If they Once. follow No Man's Land, it's going to be everyone. It's going to be Freeze. It's going to be Killer Croc. It's going to be everyone if they follow No Man's Land. Yeah, I don't need Killer Croc, but um, Killer Croc is awesome. Spider Man already tried it. It's just not. It's not something that's going to look good on the screen. <laughs> Nolan was supposed to be doing uh, Killer Croc. It was going to be a guy from New Orleans, like a gangster from New Orleans. Uh -huh. Yeah, Didn't that... they do Killer Croc in Suicide Squad. They did. Well, yeah, well, it wasn't good yeah. there either. No, it definitely wasn't good there, for sure. Technology is shitty. Mm -hmm. All right, I don't think it's a technology thing. I think it's a lizard mm -hmm. man thing. It's okay. just not a thing. It should be a thing. <laughs> How did you guys <laughs> feel that he ranked in the bat universe of all the people that we've seen? Did you think he ranked well? Should, are, do we are we? Are you talking about as far as Batman goes? Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, are we done with spoilers? That's the question. Okay. Uh, Anybody James, else have anything else to say? I, I just read an article on Variety, and Matt right. Reeves says, you're right, it is the Joker. Nice. I'm right? No, to, to the interviewer. <laughs> oh. Not your right. <laughs> well, does he mention James or not? Does he say if, I'm wrong? It says right here. Once he says, it says I'm wrong. You're right, interviewer. Matt Reeves says it is the Joker. James Brill is full of it and should stop watching Batman movies altogether. 
Was that really a question that they had to ask Matt Reeves? Like it was, wasn't that obvious that it was a joke? No, it's not obvious. Okay. Of, no. of course it is. He talks about clowns. <laughs> they left it open to interpretation. He, no. Right. Okay. Interpretation. Matt Reeves only answered the question because he's sick of being asked because there's so much ambiguity around. <laughs> he does go on to say that this that does not necessarily mean that Joker is the next villain. Sure. So James is not convinced that Paul Dano was the Riddler. <laughs> <laughs> he was the Zodiac killer. He wasn't. <laughs> all right. Let's move on from the Batman to all the Batman. Ooh. This is our ranking of the top seven or eight live action Batman in film. So these are, you know, the actors who played live action Batman on a movie screen, not a TV screen, movie screen. So um, this is a quick rank. So you can say what you want, but keep it nice and tight. Uh, I have seven. Kyle has seven. I'm assuming Zach has seven. Emotion has eight. Is that where we're at? I have eight because I chose not to have ten. <laughs> oh. So there's ten people who have played Batman. Yes, you got to in live the action. Yeah, I'm, on a movie screen. Yeah, the serials. The serials were played on movie screens. I, I wasn't around, but I think so. I wasn't around either, but I thought they were like TV things. Uh, I think they were movie things. Mm. Let me see. Right. I'm researching. <laughs> I don't know where serials were played, to be honest. They were probably were played in movies. I think so, too. Movie and screens, was, because and I think they predate TV. That's right. Yeah. No. Movies were before TV. That's right. Yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah. But, but how, <laughs> yeah. But when does Batman? All right. I won't Batman include was those 40s. two. I've choose, I chose not to include those two. Okay. We're good. Okay. All right. I'll go first. Okay. Yeah, I, I want Mo to go last because I want to hear what his mystery eighth one is. Okay, number seven for me is Val Kilmer. Um, because I I stopped caring about Val Kilmer a while ago, so I that this is more Val Kilmer I don't like that much. He's had a hard life. That's messed up. Uh, that's fine. That's fine. Uh, number six, George Clooney. He's a better Bruce Wayne than he is a Batman. Um, number five is Ben Affleck. Um. He's also a better Bruce Wayne than he is Batman, I think. Uh, number four, Adam West. Number three, Michael Keaton. Number two, before I say my number one and number two, I do want to say that my real number one favorite Batman absolutely is Kevin Conroy. From the animated the series. From the animated series. Sure. Uh, that is absolutely who I think of when I think of Batman is from the, uh, the animated series from the 90s uh, with Kevin Conroy. Okay, my number two is Christian Bale, and my number one is Robert Pattinson. Wow, wow number one. Really? Wow. wow. And I think, so Christian Bale, obviously, that trilogy everyone loves, right? You know, it's just a great Batman trilogy, especially Dark Knight. Um, but you also have Christian Bale doing, like, that voice that he does, which is, I, I like Robert Pattinson's Batman voice better than Christian Bale's Batman voice. And I thought that Robert Pattinson's Batman, I just love that he's just, like, He's this imposing kind of, he stands there. He's this immovable rock. Like he's just this kind of presence. I just, I, I really like that. And I thought he looked good as Batman. Um, he had gadgets, you know, but they weren't like goofy right. gadgets. Uh, so yeah, I was, I was into his Batman as a, as a character, as an actor. So number one, nice. nice. I'll go next. Uh, my number seven is George Clooney and my number six is Ben Affleck and my number five is Val Kilmer. I wish I, we had gotten more Val Kilmer cause I think he could have yeah, in, a, in better movies been a better Batman for uh -huh. sure. Agree. Uh, my number four is Adam West, uh, which I, I, I enjoy Adam West just because it's just so different than all the rest of them you know what i mean it's like just a very specific version of batman that none of the other batman compare to i would say of the ones i've experienced anyway my number three is robert pattinson he definitely has room to move up as we get more of these movies for sure especially once i get to see him actually be bruce wayne instead of um moody bruce wayne uh number two christian bale 
and uh, Michael Keaton is my Batman number one. James, you and I have the exact same list. No, really, <laughs> literally, exact same, literally wow. to the T. That's nice. for yeah, it, Keaton. I have a soft spot for for Val Kilmer Batman. I agree, um, and Batman Forever. It's 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 the start of the camp, really. But I have a soft spot for that movie. Um, Bale's a great Batman, and Pattinson could become could pass Bale. I, I Zach, I think you've got very valid points for all of those. Um, but Keaton is he's my first Batman movie. Like I was very young when I saw those Batman movies, younger than I should have been. And whenever I think of Batman, I always, I specifically think of Keaton in that cowl, which is like all rubber and all neck, just like looking straight up. I don't know why that's what comes to my mind. I think it's from one of the two movies, but when you say the word Batman to me, the first thing that comes to my mind is Keaton looking up in the cowl. And I don't know why. So I can put him at number one. Yeah. And don't get me wrong. The Nolan Batman movies are better movies yeah. than the Keaton Batman movies. <laughs> oh, but we're, if we're just talking about ranking the actors playing Batman, I enjoy all of Michael Keaton, the Wayne side and the Batman side. Yep. Whereas with Christian Bale, it's uh, it's less about him and more about Nolan in those movies for me. All right, Motion, hit us. With the all list. right. Now, this is really hard for me to rank these guys because they all have a soft spot in my heart and the way i kind of put this list together it's the best combination of bruce wayne and batman is how i put this list together so number eight george clooney i thought a really good bruce wayne very convincing just had no content to work with poor guy and they had nipples on the bat suit so what can you say um number eight was ben affleck who is the opposite of George Clooney. I thought he was an amazing Batman, but I did not like him as Bruce Wayne at all. He just, hmm. he just played Ben Affleck as Bruce Wayne, which is not Bruce Wayne. So that bothered me. Um, number six, Adam West, who I thought was incredible, obviously just a totally different thing, but he's mm-hmm. just great at both. Um, number five, Val Kilmer, very underrated in my opinion. I thought he was great. He just, the same thing. And I actually love Batman Forever too. I actually love that movie too. Number four, Will Arnett from the Lego movies. That is a live action movie. He was amazing. And he <laughs> covered both sides. It is, it is totally. It is live action. It, Legos it, are real. And, no, uh, and at the end, it goes to John Lithgow and his son. That's live action. Will Ferrell and his son. Oh, is it Will Ferrell? <laughs> I mean, it's easy to confuse John Lithgow and Will Ferrell. That's that's uh, all the time. Which one was um, on Third Rock from a It's son? not I even real remember. Legos. It's all animated in that movie. What are you talking about? Those are real Legos. Those are right here. Legos. It's 3D animated to look like real Legos. I don't know what you're talking about, Legos. James. Don't take my joy oh, away from gosh. me. I, I completely <laughs> accept Will Arnett as, as an entry to this. Uh, you you follow the rules. I, I do not accept, Appreciate but it. it's fine. All right, and number three, Christian Bale, who was incredible. Um, the only thing was that voice, which, in fairness, I think Robert Patterson got to learn not to do that. So, in <laughs> fairness. Um, my, my number two is the current Batman, which is Robert Patterson. And number one is Michael Keaton, who we're going right. to get to see in the Flash multi-universe, which I'm very excited. So, my first, my top two Batman we will still be able to see in new movies, which I'm excited about. Wait, wait. You think he's going to be Batman in that multi-universe? He will. He is. He is. Really? They already That's shot him. announced. They already shot Yeah, he's got Is he going to be Instagram. old guy Batman, or how does that? how is that going to work? He actually looks great. He looks great. They show some behind, like, you know, behind-the-scenes stuff, but he looks great. I mean, he's 70, but he doesn't look. Uh, I mean, he yeah, he looks great. Yeah. He doesn't look like 89 Batman. Did you see the sure. protege? Did you see the protege? No. I don't even know what that is. The protege like was out like less than a year ago and he's doing like action scenes and he looks legit. I mean, he oh, looks the great. movie, the protege. What did you think I meant? Like, I did. The I, the I, sorry. <laughs> no, I was, I thought maybe it was a TV show or oh, okay, I didn't know what it was. I don't know what it was. And then I was like, Oh yeah, that's right. He wasn't a movie where, that was an action movie. Yeah, no, right. And he has like a female assassin that he's training. Exactly. Or something. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. Exactly. I, I I I know of this movie. Have not seen it, so it's it's worth seeing. But yeah, he's he's great in that. So yeah, I think he's going to do a great job. In it. 
obviously they're gonna have a stunt man and a lot of stuff when he's in the suit, but he's gonna he's gonna be great. Who else, Batman wise, is gonna be in this multiverse uh, movie? Also Ben Affleck. Okay, so it'll be. Oh, he's coming back. Yeah. And will it be Pattinson, Affleck, and no Pattinson? I mean, he no won't be Pattinson. in the multiverse. Yeah, no, that's his is a separate universe. Really? So these Batman movies are just completely separate. Completely separate. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Will Keanu Reeves be in it? <laughs> Why? What? With John Wick? He, he no, he's playing Batman in uh, the DC League of Super Pets this year. <laughs> oh, yeah, like that's voice true. acting. I, yeah. I think he'll oh. be in the background barking. Yes, I think okay. in one of the scenes. I think they said. You know, he plays a human. He plays a human. <laughs> okay. You know, I saw that trailer before this movie started, and I'm all for it. I thought I think that it, it was. I mean, I'm not saying I'm. I'm not expecting it to be a great movie, but why can't we have superhero movies that are like expressly made for kids? Like it looks that? fun. Oh yeah, totally, no, I think that's great. it. Totally looks fun. Yeah. Mo, if you haven't checked it out, you got to check this out. No, I have. I, I love it. it looks okay. It looks fun, and they have the Bat Wheels coming out too, which looks hilarious. Also, it's like an anime. What it's is like that? A, it's like a Pixar version of the Batman universe with their vehicles, like the Batmobile, so it's like, like, it's like cars. cars. <laughs> yeah, kind of like that. It looks fun. Hmm. It looks fun. I'll have to see that one and make a judgment. <laughs> okay. Right. You, you do that little thing. <laughs> do you guys want a Batman related Galen update? Yes. Sure. So, Zach, you actually brought this up. I let Galen watch Batman animated series for the first time today. Nice. Wow. Yeah. Which episode? Which episode? Uh, we watched the, the uh, Clayface two parter. Oh, that's such a great run. It, it, Those two really, are awesome. it was like a great jump into it. Yeah, yeah, and and I asked him after like, do you like this? You want to watch more? He's like, yeah, I want to watch more another time. I'm like, okay, we'll watch more Batman together. So that's awesome. Yeah, he he really liked it. You let him watch things out of order. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, so we actually we started with the we started with the Selena Kyle one because that's the first one is Catwoman, which is a two parter. (laughs) And I could tell he was like a little. You gotta start with episode one. That is episode season one. one, episode one. Okay, that is yeah. Catwoman right. is episode one, and Fair I could enough. tell he was he was a little lukewarm on it. And then right. like you were on HBO Max, so you could see all the all the pictures, and he was you know all the thumbnails. He's like, can we watch that one with the clay face? I'm like, sure. I'm like I'd rather him have the buy into it. So makes sense. Good call. Yeah. Good call. No, oh, you got to teach him young how to force feed that oh, <laughs> until you like it. <laughs> I I think motion you can correct me, but I'm pretty sure for the most part you can jump around animated series. I think you're gonna be okay. I think yeah, you're gonna like, be like okay. Like uh, there are some overarching things going on, but I mean for a six year old just to enjoy it. Yeah. I think we're okay. Yeah, you gotta set the ground yeah. rules earlier. You don't start something until you're gonna finish it. Like <laughs> until you're committed to finishing it, no matter how bad it is. Goodness gracious. And you gotta start from episode one. It, he watches. You can James reevaluate Howie. between seasons, but once hey, James, you start, how, you gotta watch it till the end. How is the Zack Snyder um, Justice League ending? How did you like <laughs> yeah, that? Yeah, well, but tell me about the ending three versus. It ended four. exactly how I wanted it to end, <laughs> unfinished. So you, okay, all right. <laughs> wow. Like, Galen's at the age where he, when he watches the same Tiny Toons every single time. It's always the third episode. And it's the one where it's like a Star Wars parody because that, that just makes him happy. He wants to watch. Star Wars Tiny Toons. So that's allowable. If he's seen it once, he can rewatch it. But <laughs> jumping around, no way. Well, you Our can come raise my child then if you really want. <laughs> Our All side right. of genius. <laughs> Whenever you need a uh, little input, just ring, <laughs> ring it, ring a ding ding. I'll let you know. <laughs> Sorry, Galen. We're, we're watching episode one. On. James said so. <laughs> <laughs> All right, now that we've talked a bunch about Batman and a bunch, uh, sorry, a bunch about the Batman as well as the Batman, is anybody changing their rating of the Batman? Or are we still four, four, two fours, right? A four and a half and a five? Is that where we landed? No, I'm three and a half. Zach's a three and a half. Three and a half. I feel like you liked it more than Kyle and I, and you landed at three and a half. (laughs) <laughs> James, I'm surprised you're at a four because I feel like you liked it less than I did. Oh, I liked it a lot. That's that not what you said. At that's the not what you said not when, what when you said you're trying to review it. Hours, what did I say? You, you said. said this movie was all right. You were pretty lukewarm on you're it. Like, I'm, I'm fine with it. I'm fine <laughs> no, with no, I mean, four stars. 
It was a good Batman movie. Okay. At least it was a Batman movie. I mean, the last couple of movies we've gotten with Batman in it weren't even Batman movies. That's true. There was some other movie recently that he really liked, but it's what he expected to get, so he gave it two and a half. <laughs> Do you remember that? Yeah, because like, it was really average. The, yeah, he really liked the movie a lot, but it was like, I, I thought I would like it, and I did, two and a half. <laughs> <laughs> I was looking forward to this Batman. It was good. <laughs> Two stars. Surprise me. <laughs> <laughs> Not surprised. All right. Uh, thank you for listening to this episode 520 of the Cine Realist. We appreciate your listenership. Don't forget, you can always uh, follow the podcast on YouTube. Search Cine Realist. Find us there. You could support us on Patreon, patreon.com slash Realist. Leave us an Apple podcast review. Or send us a listener email to heyguys at cinerealist.com. You could also follow us on social media on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, or TikTok. You could follow me on my personal Twitter or letterbox account at yojrb. You can follow me on Twitter or letterbox at shobin. You can find me on letterbox at peter skb. Promotion. Do you want to promote anything? Um, yeah, because I I tweet probably two times a year under Moab, <laughs> so M O underscore A B, or in Instagram under I B D Bat. I feel like your Instagram is a little more active, mm-hmm. especially if you like Batman. Like there's constant Batman, you know, content generation going on over there. For Thanks, sure. James. Thanks, James. Ha- have you been to um, Deezerland in Orlando? Have not yet. Know of it. Uh, but I actually okay. haven't gone. I, I'm anxious to see the back gate section for sure. Yeah, I haven't gone either, but I've heard they have some cool cars there, including Batman related. I heard the same. Yeah. I'm anxious as well. Well, thank you for joining us, Motion. We always appreciate you giving us some of your time. It's my pleasure. Thanks for having me on, guys. You guys are awesome. Congrats on all your success. Thank you. Mo, it's great having you back on. Always a pleasure. Zach didn't enjoy it. That's why he's mute right now. He never does. He's angry with me. <laughs> he, he was trying to talk us out of it. He's like, can we not? <laughs> Next week, we will be talking uh, Oscar movies. Drive My Car, The Worst Person in the World, West Side Story, Ugh. and what was the other one? Belfast. We're doing all four? S- or some combination okay. of those. <laughs> Breaking we're news. definitely doing three of them. We just haven't decided which three of those four that we're going to do. So uh, if you want to talk Oscar movies right before the Oscars are given out, that's what we're doing next week. Uh, do a little pre-watching, one or two, and uh, we'll let you know what we think about those. Until then, keep it real. still here? It's over. Go home. Go.